Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everybody. And well, oh, hold on, I just got a notification on my phone. One second. Oh, Argon Matrix is live. Holy, all right, guys, I got to call it a stream. I'm going to go, uh, going to go watch. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Hope you're having a wonderful Friday, wherever you might be. I scared you. I did not mean to. Hey there, Lisa. Fell asleep watching yesterday's stream. I'm glad I could provide a, a cozy enough atmosphere th for that to happen. Also, I understand, you know, it gets a little boring from time to time. You just, it's not going to hurt my feelings, but it's okay. It's okay. I joke. I kid. <laughs> it's Friday already. It's like uh, Katy Perry said, TGIF. I had to start work at 4 a.m. today, came home, watched last night's live, and fell asleep. That's a, that's a heck of a day. That is a heck of a day. Hopefully you're well-rested now. Long weekend Friday? Is it a long weekend? Wait, last weekend was a long weekend, at least in Canada. What's the what's the holiday right now? At the end of May, what's what holiday is at the end of May? I mean, it's not it's not going to be like July 1st, I'll tell you that. Memorial Day? Memorial Day. Also, hello Wickedy and uh, pres presumably goodbye Wickedy, you're live in 3 minutes. <laughs> Wickedy, what are you doing here? Good to see you though, as always. Good to see good to see everybody. I'm excited to to get into it today and hopefully get our second auto grabber. Saw the alert, had to see. Just had to watch Chloe bob her arms up and down for a few minutes and 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 hang out. I respect it. Good to see you. I hope you have a good stream. May the odds be ever in your favor. I hope your I hope your first roll is is not at disadvantage. Best of luck. Today is Bermuda Day here in Bermuda. Happy Bermuda Day to all my Bermudan viewers. Either way, very excited to get into it. Also, one one real quick thing before we have some... We, well, it's two real quick things because one, we have fan art to go over. But first, before that, um, I changed my stream setting. There's like three different options in the YouTube streaming thing. For, for latency, which is supposed to determine like how long it is between like when you hear me and when you can like chat back and respond. It's like the it's the stream delay. And I've have, I have lowered it to the ultra low latency setting from previously where it was at low latency. It's supposed to it might sacrifice some quality. I don't know if it's gonna look terrible, but uh let's test it out right now, see what the stream delay is like. Yesterday's stream delay was about like seven or eight seconds. So Let's do the same test. Um, get yourself a smiley face, primed and ready to type in your little chat bar. Get Just get it ready. To, don't type it. Don't hit enter until I say so. And it, I'll count down from three and, and say post. And then when I say post, then post it and we'll have an accurate estimation. So does, is everyone ready? You got your smiley faces? All right. Three, two, one, post. Bro, that was like four seconds. That was that was like four seconds. We cut the delay like in half. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that that is a noticeable difference. Yo, ultra low latency is where it's at. I don't know. We'll see when we get into the game. If it looks like I'm recording off of a potato, then uh, just let me know, and I can always change it back. But <laughs> but we got uh, we got supreme low latency right now. That's huge. All right, well, hopefully that'll make it uh, easier to have, like, conversations. Guess who's back? Back again. Argon's back. Ted left rain. All right. Um, anyway, with that out of the way, let's go over the fan art real quick. We got one lovely little piece here over in the Discord from Red Cookie 22 A bit of a different fan art. We're getting a lot of different kinds of fan art today, different mediums and Lego is a fantastic medium. Beatrix holding her lucky star shards, getting that getting that dark cowboy hat, a little bit of iron and trash can in the back. It's it's chalked, packed full of references. Love to see the Lego fan art. Thank you to Red Cookie 22 
for sharing that is very cute. I, I haven't built Lego in like a very long time. Makes me want makes me want to go and buy like a full one of those big like blue tubs that's like just like full of Lego. Very very cute. Yo, Red Cookie, you're in here. Thank you very much, and thank you to all the fan artists who have shared fan art over the past uh, past while. If you'd like to share your own fan art, exclamation point Discord. There's a fan art channel there. Let us know how you want to be credited. If you want to be credited, all that good stuff. It can be whatever medium constitutes art for you. We've had songs, we've had Lego, we've had visual art, we've had written word, we've had memes. Before long, we're going to have someone doing like a, an interpretive dance or something. I don't even know. I digress, though. I think I know it would be the hardest goal to get as fourth. Craft an ostrich incubator. I need to get the 1 in 200 chance from rocks, a couple rare drops from artifact spots, and much more. What's the 1 in 200 chance from drops from, from rocks? For the ostrich incubator. Oh, I guess that's for the because uh, the ostrich incubator. The recipe is okay. Yeah, that's the that's the the mummified bat, right? That's the mummified bat. I would have to get the secret note for the egg. Yeah, the mummified bat because I need to complete the field research. That's a that's a good point, but we'll see. What's the plan for today? Um, I mean, we're just gonna go where the wind takes us. I, I really want to get that second auto grabber if I can. That way we can have our barn nice and set up. Then I would like to get a whatchamacallit. I would like to get the last little bit of iridium. We got three bars of iridium last time. We need two more, which is really good actually, because the lowest possible drop of from a treasure chest in Skull Cavern is two. Is it Skull Cavern or Skull Caverns or Skeleton Caverns? And after that, it's basically Snooze Town all the way till like year seven, basically. <laughs> I hate to say it, but I mean we're gonna need to we're gonna need to sleep sleep the days away, clear the debris, get ourselves some star fruit, and and welcome the Junimos onto the farm eventually. That's a, that's the bulk of what we got going ahead. But we're gonna try and get that Skull Cavern stuff out of the way first. Skeleton mine. All right. Um, let me first real quick hit you with a little exclamation point goal. Goal! There we go. Thank you, Nightbot. Pin that one right up there. And we're good to go. Alright, let me situate my windows appropriately. I will switch this around. Um, is there anything open that doesn't need to be open? My, my computer was, I, I like turned on my computer today and it was like, hey, you need to reset to do like a Windows update. And I'll be like, I'll do that later. So hopefully that doesn't like mess with anything. <laughs> we should be fine, right? Should be totally fine. What, what, what's the worst that could happen? Skull Cavern on the wiki main page. I always thought it was Skull Cavern, but I, d I definitely say Skull Caverns from time to time. Never Skeleton Caverns, although it, it lives rent-free in my brain, thanks to Shawnee Do. I'm going to turn to Joja right in front of those Jun Junimos. Darn straight. <laughs> they shouldn't be asking for a wood skip if they know what's good for them. I don't know what their problem is, what, they, what, they, what kind of place they think this is. Where I can just get a wood skip at the at at the drop of a hat. I have many hats to drop, and none of them are are wood skip tangent tangential. I, I'm sorry to tell you. We're just waiting for a star drop luck day now, basically, so we can go to Skull Cavern without too much worry. We've got we we're, we're very well set up. We got all our good luck goodies. We just gotta wait for that star drop luck day, courtesy of Wellwick. Well, with the master fortune teller. And we go out every day, we pet Pi, and we return. That way it gives... we Number one, we get our screenshot outside for the day. And number two, we it gives enough time for our animals to hopefully go outside and, uh, and eat the grass. Eat the grass. How's the hay supply? I will check the hay supply on our next Monday here when we go out for debris day. It just coincides well. But it's a good, good shout-out. I was thinking about that as well. I don't know what our hay supply is looking like. 
we got our auto feeder already on deck, so we don't need to don't need to worry about restocking at the very least. Or like yeah, but restocking it in the in the barn itself or in the coop itself or either actually because our, our both of them are fully upgraded now. I didn't think about that the last time. Like I said, like the only reason to upgrade our barn to its max size would be for pigs, which we don't actually need right now. But it's also good for the uh, auto feeder, isn't it? That's the it, the auto feeder only comes with the final upgrade. Or am I mistaken on that? I'm pretty sure that's true. When I say pi, you always turn your head because of your username. Hi. <laughs> yeah, there's there's no alternate pronunciations I can offer you there. It's it's too simple. Goal 50? Who's, wait, who's on goal 50? Jay, Sky, are you on goal? Has anyone beaten a randomizer yet? Has anyone made it through all the goals? I have yet to see anyone complete a randomizer run, but I know uh, a lot of people are a lot further along than I am. Also, I should take my jades out to the desert trader today. I do wonder what like the highest goal someone's gotten to, whether it be standard mode or hardcore mode is right now. wrap around to the desert obelisk oh, bam it's so convenient it's so nice you're on goal 29 def not 50 <laughs> could have set yourself up better in year one i mean that you don't know what you don't know right there are definitely things you can do early on to set yourself up better for the future no matter what your goal layout's going to be but at the end of the day, you don't know where those goals are going to fall and whether that uh, that prep work will be in vain or not. Still in your second Dwarf Scroll 3 being ornery? Yo, do you have Befriend the Dwarf too? Homie. We're homies across time and space. See Beatrix driving the bus? I don't think she's licensed, but it's, it's like a straight shot, right? It's just like a straight road. It's a, it's got like one turn. I could I could drive that. Chat, are you confident that you could drive a bus across like this this distance here? Having never driven a bus beforehand? Uh-oh. Oh, wait a wait. That's like hold on. No! Get away from there! Stop that! No! <laughs> wait, what does that do? what does that mean? What does that mean? Is that all my chickens? Is that all my chickens are turned to turn to voids? No, we're fine. It's okay. She didn't turn all my chickens into voids. It just gives you a void egg. One void egg. Oh, I thought it turned all my chickens in. I was thinking of the slime hutch. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking of the slime hutch where she, all all your all your slimes just get turned into black slimes. Okay. That's that's totally fine. One free dark egg. I won't be able to pick it up though. Will the auto grabber just take it or is it uh is it a special egg? Living off the land. No, thank you. I would like that, but I'd like it to be star drop luck instead. All right, we're going to have a heck of a debris day today, probably, because it's the start of a new season. That said, our grass strategy is pull, is going pretty swimmingly, I will say. Also, don't forget to grab your chair to get around a bit easier here. Imagine getting craft a cheese press and, ca and craft, craft the preserves jar after getting the requisite farming levels. I would I would be I would be elated to be honest with you. I'd be like, you know what? Even though I went through all the trouble, I, I and I'm happy that I will have gone through all the trouble. It's uh it would be nice to just be able to craft my own. Am I gonna complete the entire greenhouse? Uh as of yet undecided. I could see a world where I do go go through and complete the entire greenhouse, but it would take a couple extra seasons beyond what we would normally have to do. But it might be worth it just for just for the, the good good vibes of the Junimos. They're having a great time out here. Debris getting a little little spicier down here. I'm I don't remember there being this many rocks down here before. Alright, let's check our hay supplies. Pieces of hay. We're still at 184, so we're fine at Probably at least until, like, winter, I would assume. 
because obviously in winter we're going to go through it a lot faster, especially once we start getting, uh, once we get our barn animals all set up. That's what's really going to start eating into it is when we have like, like multiple, multiple things feeding off that one silo. Long live Silo Island. I'm right there with you. Yo, look at the, the mahogany trees. They're starting to come in. This is, I think this is going to be the second fully grown one right here. And then we got, uh, we got a race for number three. It's on its way though. Why does it look kind of, those mahogany trees looked kind of faded though. They looked kind of faded. Is that just the summer palette that I'm not used to? I don't often grow mahogany trees, so maybe it's just a, uh, it's just like a, a palette that I have not seen in a long time. But they looked, uh, they looked like, I don't know. Those trees looked a little diseased to me. What if that was something that could happen in this game? If your trees just get diseased and they get they get tree rot and just fall over, it would be great to help clear up some of these trees. But when you're trying to actually you know build a tree farm. Probably would not be the best. Auto grabber can't pick up any existing product on the ground, and the witch always places the void egg on the ground. I didn't actually go into the to the coop to see. I'm gonna assume you are correct, which makes you know it's not the not the end of the world, but it's not the start of the world either. A new chick hatched. It looks odd. I, I forgot to even check this. All right, Fasper. No. What were we gonna name this one? I, there was a great name last time. The first one we named Arsenic. This one. One of, one of the elements is such a good name, but I don't remember what element it was. Obsidian. Obsidian's not an element. Element. Deuterium. Iron. Sabrinium. Selenium. No, I don't, I don't think it was selenium. Hold on, let me let me just go through all the elements in my head. There's antimony, arsenic, aluminum, selenium, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, uranium, and nickel, neodymium, neptunium, germanium, and iron, americium, ruthenium, uranium, europium, zirconium, lutetium, vanadium, and lanthanum, and osmium, and acetine, and radium, gold, and protactinium, and indium, and valium, and iodine, and thorium, and thulium, and thallium, and yttrium, and terbium, and actinium, and rubidium, and boron, gadolinium, and niobium, and iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium! Samarium. We got there. Then, bris then bismuth, bromine, lithium, beryllium, and barium, of course. We all know that. I don't see a void egg on the ground, chat. Void void egg, I think, got put in there. I think we're I think we're safe. Welcome to the world, Samarium. Nerd? Gladly. I I'll, I'll gladly take that. Thank you. Yes, I am a nerd. Bookworm, I'm studious from my cerebral cortex to my gluteus. Back in kindergarten, I aced my college entrance exam. Now I'm no rocket scientist. Oh wait, I am. Samarium is a great name for a void chicken. It's 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 a beautiful name. Samarium the samurai chicken. I don't know why a void chicken is is samurai in my head. That's just the way it works out. Yo, this grass is doing great work. I I cannot I cannot tell a lie. Con call me honest Argon. I got no word of a lie. For being the start of a brand new season, the debris is very scant. Thanks to all this, uh, all this, um, hullabaloo. It's grass. You just think of Samaritan? Like a good Samaritan? Makes you think of Sumerians? It's in the way here. Oh, there's, oh, the whole, there's a whole piece of rock right there in the way. Hold on a second. I don't want I don't want to get in a situation like last time where I I trap myself and have to reset the day. That would be awkward indeed. Okay, so I got over here. Just do a little chair hopping. We do a little hopping around here. Okay, I think we're pretty good as far as debris goes. Um it is the start of a new season. I think the start of a new season is when we should just check out Cinder Sap Forest real quick for the debris. That makes the most sense in my head, so I'm gonna go do that. You're a geek. That means you're just a hipster wannabe. Been too long since I've seen that song, honestly. Um, is is six sugar or five quality retaining soil more valuable? I, I'm gonna say six sugar, probably. Cat P 
people arise. Cat people, dog people, all types of people are welcome here. Whether, whether you own a cat, a dog, or a, a pet scorpion. All are welcome. I can't tell if the fiber is is fighting back very strongly against the debris, but I want to say that it is. I feel like there's less stone here and significantly more fiber than last time we came through. The fiber is not spread quite this far. The stone still holds uh, hold strong on the western front, but one day we... I guess that's the eastern front of the lake, but western front... It was west of me. It was in front of my west. Oh, hold on. Boom. All right. Hopefully this fiber starts really eating away at uh, at all this as well. That would be phenomenal. This wood, that's fiber. I'm a fool. A foolish, foolish fool. That's a lot of fiber as well right there. Fiber's farm could never. Got back from vacation just in time to catch the stream. AP girl, welcome back. Where'd you go on vacation? I'm going to guess you went to um, Tahiti. That's my guess. Hopefully I'm not right, because if I am, I'm going to look like a stalker. Francisca Von Karma. I'm, I am I know Phoenix, right? I understood that reference. I played the game. I played Ace Attorney once. Should be studying for finals right now, but you're so tired. I mean, honestly, even though if you are like that tired, I don't think you should be studying for finals because you're not going to retain anything and you're just going to be like upset with yourself by the end of it. I think if anything, if you're that tired, you should take a nap, wake up refreshed and uh, and then study for I don't however long you want to study for. Try and retain some knowledge a little bit better that way. I think that's that's the best case scenario. You went to Hamburg. That is not that's not too far from Tahiti, right? That's, what, that's probably only like twenty thousand miles from Tahiti, something like that. Twenty thousand kilometers. I don't even know. Capsule broke. It, it was it's been broken for for a hot minute. That alien's vibing out somewhere. All right, I think we're good to sleep, right? Yeah, they're the same thing. Basically, I thought so. Three hundred dollars for six bags of sugar. Jack, could you imagine if we went to a grocery store and a bag of sugar was fifty dollars? I mean, I haven't actually bought a bag of sugar in in who knows how long. Maybe they are fifty dollars, but that seems exorbitant to me. Also, I'm gonna go now that my inventory's a bit cleaner. I'm gonna go pick up that. Uh, that wheat flour that I left down here. Might as well. Look, I know it's not debris day, but when I see debris, I'm on a sea debris diet. If I have to, if I see debris, I have to eat it. Bag of sugar is more like five dollars. One kilogram of sugar for two dollars. That's a steal. Chad, do you think people eat sugar just, like, as a snack sometimes? I've never done that myself. The closest I, I've, I've gotten... Oh, the wheat flour's gone. Okay. Screw me, I guess. The closest I've gotten is when you eat, like, a bag of sour candy that's, like, coated in, like, the little, like, the refined sugar. And then, uh... And you, like, scoop some of the sugar out of the bottom of the bag at the end and, like, lick it off your fingers. I've done that before. But actually just like buying a bag of sugar and like eating it by the spoonful, probably not recommended. But there's guaranteed to be people that do it. Just a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. Probably honestly not true. I feel like a spoonful of sugar would, I mean, it would just be too sweet. Doesn't really say anywhere that a dollar is equal to a dollar. It's the closest comparison we have though. I guess a dollar could be equal to like a yen. And then, uh, then that would throw everything off completely differently. Hey there, Poil. 
All right. You ate sugar cubes when you were a kid? Sugar cubes are so cool, I wish they were real. I've never seen a sugar cube in real life, so I mean... I have, I have no, uh... I have no way of knowing that they are real. Spoonful of sugar helps with hiccups for some people. I haven't had hiccups in, I want to say... Like, probably not since I was, like, uh... Like, 12 or so. It's not a thing that happens to me all that often. I don't know if people, some people are, like, more inclined than others towards hiccups. I have to imagine there's probably something genetic about it. That said, I didn't take biology in high school, so my knowledge is a little bit wanting. I live work in a liquor store that doesn't sell sugar cubes. What the heck? <laughs> Just, you sell sugar, sugar cubes in your liquor stores? No, yeah, we, def we definitely do not sell sugar cubes. You know, I take it back. I have one distinct memory of seeing sugar cubes in my life. It was when I was very young, and my dad took me to work. He used to drive, uh, he used to drive tour buses through the Albertan, uh, like, through, like, the Rocky Mountains and stuff in that area. And he took me to work one time, and I remember sitting in, like, the little, like, staff break room that they had, and there were sugar cubes there. And I was like, oh, those look neat. And that was about the, that was the extent of my sugar cube experience. Hope you enjoyed my sugar cube story. 15 battery packs from one singular lightning rod. It did, and it only took like four years. Technically like three years, because we didn't get the, the actual lightning rod until a decent ways in, right? Driving in the Rockies is fun. It is fun. It's very scenic and very beautiful. I, I live near enough the Rockies that, like, I get a little, little bit desensitized to it, but I can't deny it's an extremely beautiful part of the world. But some of those roads are, like, the most narrow roads in history. Not literally, but because I, I've seen videos where, like, people, like, the road is, like, half the size of their car. Or, like, half the width of their car. Um, but some of those roads are so narrow that it's scary. For sure. Spirits are in good humor today. I think a little extra luck. That's not star drop. That's uh, that's only gold pyramid, right? We'll get there. We'll get there one day. Can be quite challenging also. I'm, up, I'm always up for a challenge. I mean, it's been a long time since I've actually gone through the Rockies in any great capacity. Whether it be driving myself or as a passenger, like it's been it's been a hot minute for sure. But I definitely have uh, have trauma, especially if you're driving in like the winter. If you're, if you're going through the Rockies in the winter, those roads can be a literal death trap, depending on the actual like depending on the weather. You got to be real careful. Can I tell you today's good programming tip? Absolutely, Constick. Your programming tip for the day is to use switch statements more often. People for chronically forget that they exist, myself included. The switch statements are so useful. Highly recommend more st switch statements. Just to, just make sure to use the break keyword and uh, and set yourself a default. Those are the things that that typically put people off of using switch statements because they're highly prone to bugs if you don't uh, put the break keywords in the right place or the default keyword. There you go. And if you were, and if you uh, are writing in a language that does not have built-in switch statements, um, pick a different language because that language is bad. I'm sorry, it's just, I don't make the rules, it's just how it is. You sometimes cry when listening to My Little Pony songs. Can't prove it. Dude, I've cried to so many My Little Pony songs, it's not even funny. <laughs> I still tear up every time. I, I, every time I, It's been a long time, but every time I watch Magical Mystery Cure, my favorite episode, it's uh, I, I definitely tear up a little bit. 
Te tears of joy mainly. There is it's a very very nice sort of heartwarming episode. All right, gonna go check in with the uh, with the chickadees. Check our hay supply as well. Just I just want a good barometer of like how much we're going through in a week, roughly. We did have like one rainy day this week, so that's gonna guarantee some hay was lost. Hello, what are you what are you doing in here? You don't want to go out with your friends? What is wait? What is this? Wait, is that where is that the void egg? Is that where the void egg is right there behind the auto grabber? There's no shot. <laughs> There's something there. There is something there. That's got to be the void egg, I guess, right? What on earth? Stealth void egg? Oh my gosh. All right. Well, good to know. <laughs> good to know. I got to be extremely careful when checking that auto grabber now, I guess. Yo, welcome on in, uh, Erisus. 173. Yeah, we're not going through hay all that fast. That's all right. Glad you were enjoying the uh, the Iron Man VODs. I definitely want to get back to the Iron Man. I want to do... I'm probably going to do, like, a channel update video in the near future because I do have a lot of things I should address, like, you know, the Iron Man, the Price of Perfection video, other videos that I've been working on. There's, there's a lot that I would like to talk about. And I want to get... I don't want to just, like, talk about it in the middle of the stream, like, right now because I want to get all my thoughts in a row so I can say things... so I can, like, talk about things candidly and coherently. But uh, that's something I definitely want to do in the near future. That said, I also like don't want to do it because the time that I put into making like an update video, why don't why am I not just like working on the other stuff, right? Not that I have to put like that much effort into making an update video traditionally, but it's um, it's not it's 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 not a non-zero amount of effort. Either way, I'd, li I'd like to keep people in the loop a bit more, so that's definitely on me. I could even just do, like, written updates, probably, but I digress. That's not for here and now. Here and now, I'm, I'm going to enjoy the randomizer as it carries me along on its uh, sparkly wings. Its sparkly dice-pipped wings. And just see how far it takes me. That's my, that's my usual... Thought process is like if I'm enjoying something, then even if even like if there's other things that are pressing, I should you know try and focus on uh, try and focus on where the passion's taking me, at least to a certain extent. Can't do that for like everything and forever, but some sometimes you can't always wait for the muse to strike you before you work on something. Sometimes you have to you have to work you have to push past the blockade, you know. Train. Get some train emojis in chat, by the way. We can go visit the train. I'm not opposed. That said, by the time I actually get there, I, it's probably going to be long gone, but we'll, we'll give it a whirl here. You can get oil in Joja crates? You certainly can. All-purpose cooking oil, maybe. A little Hello Fresh crate. Well, actually, no, the Hello Fresh crates are the ones that contain, like, Wheat flour, sugar, and oil, right? Like all the fixins. Hello? Is the train gone? I can hear it. I, I guess I literally like just missed it by the skin of my teeth. I didn't get to see the train at all. That's upsetting. Also, a lot of debris up here. Good thing I came up here. It's debris day. You may have heard about it. Nationally recognized holiday. Sorry to all my train enjoyers. Hey there, Wheat Woos. I'll be faster next time, don't you worry. Maybe there's maybe there's leprechaun shoes hidden in behind the spa over here. That said, my inventory is full, so would I ever know? I mean, I would, because it would come up with a little, eh, inventory is full. And then I'd be like, oh, there's something hidden here. Wait, what the heck? 
Oh, I thought I thought this little like pebble was like going over top of me. I thought it was like a weird little texture glitch, but no, I was just in my eyes playing some tricks on me right there. That's fine. Pains you so much to have all those warm spots left untilled. It does for me too, but I don't have my hoe, and I'm not th I'm not committed enough. I don't care enough about the warm spots to like go get my hoe and come back, which is definitely a me problem. But it's also like I mean. Everyone knows that if I did get the hoe, go all the way back, I'd get like three pieces of stone out of it. Just not worth the effort for so much disappointment. Oh, hold on. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, not this guy again. Just wanted to say that I appreciate your business. I, I'll, I'm just buying grass starters from you because there's no other option right now. As soon as I get to craft grass starters, sir, I'm never talking to you again in my life. Probably not true, but, like, what if, though? Oh, I actually changed exclamation point FAQ, by the way, to exclamation point rules, because it's more fitting for the challenge we're currently on. Exclamation point rules. It'll be a bit of a, it'll be a bit of a, an adjustment, because it's been FAQ for so long, but exclamation point rules should be, uh, should be the new one. It just makes more sense in my brain. There it is. Nightbot finally caught up. All right, I think we're good, right? I'm going to say we're good. Lock it in. I do need to befriend him eventually. You're not wrong. There will come a time when we have to befriend Pierre, and uh, I'm sure everyone's looking forward to that day greatly. 400 gold for four, what, four bottles of oil? That is, some, that is some premium olive oil if I've ever seen it. Extra virgin. Chat, what does virgin mean in the context of olive oil? Like, you hear all the time about extra virgin olive oil and all that stuff. Like, it's the only olive oil that I even really know of, to be honest with you. But I don't actually know what it means in that context. Young olives? Never been cooked with? I mean, I would hope it's never been cooked with. I, I hope that everything that I'm buying in the grocery store has never been cooked with, unless it's like a pre-cooked thing. I don't want to know. <laughs> I think it means that it hasn't been smushed as much. Less processed. I'm getting lo lots of different answers. Something about it being pure. <laughs> what the heck? Hey, hey Siri. Why do they call it extra virgin olive oil? Here's an answer from Delishably.com. Virgin means that the oil is unrefined and pure because no chemicals or heat are used during its extraction. It is. It's all about that purity. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Closer to the traditional definition than than I would have than I would have thought, I guess. Anyway, I'm going to sleep for the night. Got nothing to do with the age of the olives. Rightfully so, I would say. Yo, star drop luck, finally! All it took was a little talking about virgins. All right. Let's go ahead. We got everything. We're we're good to go, right? I can just go. I can just drink my coffee. Sip my pumpkin soup. Little hot pumpkin soup on a hot summer's day. Sounds like a match made in heaven. And we're off. Yo, and tomorrow's the luau. Oh, this is going to be a great couple of days. If we can get our auto grabber here. Get ourselves the last iridium. Also, let's set up, go ahead. We'll go ahead and set up a pole real quick once I get to the actual uh, cavern here. Put the watering can away. I probably should have. You're not wrong. I probably also should have, should have put the axe away. But I have an axe to grind with this place, so maybe it all works out in the end. All right. How many resets for an auto? Grabber or Iridium? With the blood of the virgins and the sacrificial void egg, we shall find our way to the treasure rooms. This is just, it just got a whole lot more serious all of a sudden. Either way, get your zero reset uh, punch card ready. 
Get your zero reset ticket because it's about to go it's about to go down. It's 87 staircases. There's no way in 87 staircases, plus however many freebies, we don't get uh we don't get what we need here. That's already one freebie locked and loaded right there. You love to see it. Most people are saying one to three resets right now. A solid 50% of chat. That's higher than usual. Usually like the highest option is like uh it's like around 40%. But, I mean, these freebies, these freebies, you can't deny it. We're saving so many staircases. There's a chance we make it to floor 100 on this one. Just off the back of these first few freebies alone. Why not floor 100 today? Well, we're going to try. I'm going to make an honest, solid effort for it. But I can't guarantee anything necessarily. Oh, we're looking for dino eggs because they do not provide foraging experience. We learned this last time. Also, be very careful these Iridium Bats. They do not mess around. Dino's not laying eggs today. That's okay. Oh my gosh, you see what I got? I got like a 45 there. That's a big yikes. Cautiously optimistic. That's, an, that's a reasonable level of optimism, I would say. Ca cautious optimism is... I'm not going to say it's the best optimism, but it's probably the most common optimism. I just don't want to waste any staircases, so I'm being very deliberate with all my placements here. Make sure we don't, uh, don't mess anything up here. Come on, first treasure room. First treasure room is going to be a, it's going to be a banger. You know it to be true. Took us a while to find anything last time. Hopefully we can make up for it this time. I'm not going to be this focused on every single dive if I have to do more. But for the zero reset belief, I, I have to focus on it. Also for the dino eggs. This one's for all my dinosaur enjoyers. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dude, why does a why does a serpent on a dinosaur floor look so cursed? Yeah, I feel like you don't often see serpents on these floors. Maybe I'm maybe I'm mistaken there, but it, that felt weird. How many blue cowboy hats? At least like two, probably. It seems like a safe bet. Oh my gosh, we're getting so many so many dino floors. I didn't realize how how uncommon. Um, Dinosaur eggs were like on the actual floors themselves. It was, like the one floor that we saw them on, we had uh there were two of them. So I don't know if we just got insanely lucky or if certain floors are have a stronger proclivity towards giving dino eggs than others, like certain floor layouts or something. Is there a command to see what goals I've finished already? Not yet, but I will set one up. Right now, it's easy enough to just say I've befriended the dwarf and built a desert obelisk. Those are the current goals that have been completed. And we're well on our way to catching our very first fish. Oh, there was a freebie down there. Shoot. Of course, everyone knows the easiest kiss... The easiest kiss? The easiest fish to catch first is definitely the blue discus. That's the, that's the main reason we're doing this. Randomizer or no, I always try to catch the blue discus as my first fish. It just makes the most sense. Oh, freebie. Freebie spotted. Are we on track to get floor 100? 31, 66, no, not, not quite on track. Then maybe like one more good shaft or a few more freebies and we can, we can still make this happen. There's a solid chance. Floor 100 could be in the cards. But even if we don't get floor 100, just like a literally a single treasure room. Like even one. <laughs> Come on, just give, give me something, something to live for here. Give me some hope.
I'm waiting on a miracle over here. So it would seem, anyway. And the first best NPC to befriend is obviously the dwarf, homie. You know it to be true. We're so close. We're so close to a potential floor 100. I gotta, I gotta start perusing. You know, I thought, I thought it was a shaft there, but it's just a, it's just a rock. Common mistake. My triple shot is also, is also dead. Nine. Uh, we're, we're on slate to get to what floor 99 here, and the B boss dot OGG just dropped. This has to be blessed. This, this is, this is a blessing if I've ever seen one. There's a freebie? Is that the freebie we need? If my math is correct, 93 plus 7. 93 plus 7. As long as I don't accidentally mess it up here and do like a double staircase or something. First floor 100 in human history, in recorded history. We've made it. It's floor 100, the guaranteed legendary floor 100 treasure room. Give me that auto grabber. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I already got one of these. It's a knockoff. No. No. Maybe the double. Rip. That's a big rip. <laughs> After all that build up to floor 100, they're like, here you go. Take, take something from the bargain bin. I'm like, oh, jeez. Well, one reset deep. What can you do? One reset, one treasure room. That's not a great rate to be on, but uh, I have faith that we will make up the difference in the near future here. Eric really wants you to wear something other than a garbage hat. I'm already wearing the, the dark cowboy hat. I don't know what more I can do. It's my favorite drip right now. At least remember I can leave the axe. Maybe next time. Like I said, I've got an axe to grind. He thought I was joking. He thought I was just making a bit. Like, oh, it's a funny, clever pun. Ha 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 ha. But he'll leave the... He'll definitely leave the axe next time. No. We got an axe to grind with this place. Especially now, after that last run. Okay, they're trying to make up for it now. They're trying to make amends. Give me a treasure room literally as soon as humanly possible. Hopefully that's a great, great sign of things to come here. Chat, what are the odds of getting... Uh, treasure room on every floor from floor 10 to floor 100. Do you think we can make it happen one day? Do you think, do you think Blade could find a seed? I mean, it's, they're not seeded, so actually that wouldn't work, but there's got, there's a chance. There's a, there's a non-zero chance. The probability is zero, but the chance is non-zero. One in 23. Sounds about right. low the odds are low that's when you know it's bad if people are saying the odds are low they don't even bother calculating it because it's obviously so infinitesimally small it's like the odds of that we're going to complete this challenge in this calendar year it's not worth calculating because like like let's be real either it happens or it doesn't so 50 percent I'm not, I don't see the flaw in that logic. I think you're right. No more than 70%. Get off the train tracks, you silly little iridium crab, by the way. Someone's gonna hit you. Who was using these minecarts at some point? Like, someone actually, like, dug out all these caverns and built a, a solid little infrastructure down here. Then they just, they just went and abandoned it. So much hard work for, for so little payoff. It's now all just like run down by these monsters. Dwarves? I wanted to say dwarves, yeah. But maybe it's the elves. Maybe that's why you never find anything about elves in Stardew Valley other than like the elvish jewelry and like the elf blade. Maybe they just got lost down here in Skull Caverns. Maybe they didn't get lost. Maybe they found, like, the bottom of Skull Cavern and, and built a new civilization. <laughs> Mr. Chi was feeling goofy. 
just feeling a little quirky one day, decided to dig an infinite pit beneath the desert. I can respect it. Technically not infinite, but you know what I mean. The Balrog got them all. Chat, what is happening? Why, do, why are we getting, like, zero treasure rooms? It's Star Drop Luck Day. We've got the Pumpkin Soup. L literally the only difference maker could be if I had a Lucky Lunch instead of a Pumpkin Soup. And that's what, it's, a, it's a plus one luck difference. There's no way that makes that big of a difference, right? Because Star Drop is evil. Should I be going on a? Uh, should I be going on like Red Skull days then? Like I'm going, like I'm going and searching for the, the Soul Stone. Wait for the Red Skull. Plus one luck is a huge difference, but I mean, the the higher my luck is, the less that plus one difference should matter, right? Like, I'm with you that if, like, you're at zero luck, plus one is a huge difference, but if you're already at, like, four luck, it's like seeing a hundred lines in a bush at that point. The fading to black that between every floor makes you very sleepy. It's a little monotonous fade. Ooh, pickle jar rag. This run may be blessed yet as well. I think we're going to make it 400 again here, actually, by the looks of it. Ow. 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 Welcome on in, Mobby. How many resets are we at right now? We are currently on one reset. And it's not going to two. It's not going to two. Floor 100's got ourselves, got us a, uh, a beautiful prize waiting. Just you wait. Oh, I thought this was floor 99, and I was, like, very excited. <laughs> but on floor 101, now we're talking. I meant floor 102, of course, naturally. All right, well, I mean, there is some nice iridium there. It's just not the iridium that we're looking for. Still haven't found what I'm looking for, it turns out. Reminds me of when I was playing with the dolls in Haley's Kitchen. I never did that. That's You're making that up. It's a fever dream. Does it sound like something I would do, though? Next one's going to be Pog. I, I certainly hope so. We're due. We're overdue, chat, for a, for a highly beautiful, illustrious treasure room. Even if it's not the Autograbber or the Iridium, if we can just get something that makes me like feel something... No, stop giving me all these like bombs, these life elixirs, all this nonsense. Give me, give me, drop me like a prismatic shard or like some beet seeds. You know the two most sought after things in Stardew Valley: prismatic shards and beet seeds. You know what I just thought of is that we could also get some uh, some star drop seeds while we're in the desert today, and we could probably plant our our two star drops that we're allowed to grow. It is summer, so we might as well get that taken care of, right? Do an actual proper little bit of farming. If I want beet seeds, Sandy is right there. Yeah, but I don't want to pay for them. Is that so much to ask? Some what? I know, right? First I'm ranching, now I'm about to go grow some crops? Like, what the heck do I think I'm doing? This is supposed to be like a mining game. Ooh, little genie shoes. I think we already actually have genie shoes at home, but maybe not. Yeah, I thought this game was called Stardew Caverns, not Stardew Valley. There is farming in this game. Believe it or not, yeah, the hoe isn't just there to, like, dig up artifacts. The watering can's not just there to water your cat or dog. Believe it or not, they're actually, they actually serve a, ut a utilitarian purpose. 
there is geode farming. <laughs> I'm a rock farmer. Just call me Pinkamina Diane Pie. Ooh, that makes me feel a little something. Still not enough, but I mean, it's uh, it's at least a start. Now, if we can lock in an uh, another auto grabber or some iridium, or one of them, <laughs> they're tempting me. They're tempting me, chat. They're building up to something great here. You can tell. You can tell there's electricity in the air. They're building it up. They're building it up very nicely. Oh, baby. Red cowboy hat. Some hard chat. There's no way. This is this is such a blessed run. Look at this inventory right now. Look at this inventory. What on earth? <laughs> what on earth is happening? Keep it going. Keep it rolling. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. This is this has been a very fruitful treasure room packed run. If we can make it to, if we can make it to floor 100 again, guaranteed we're getting that auto auto grabber. I can't reset this one. Watch me. I mean, if if I don't get the iridium and if I don't get the auto grabber, it's getting reset just like anything else. It wouldn't matter if I got this or if I got like two life elixirs and a kick in the pants. We're here for for two spe very specific things, and we will not rest until we find them. You'd save this run even if I don't get an auto petter or, or an auto grabber or iridium. I'm just built different, Chad. I'm sorry to tell you, I'm built different. I can resist the allure. There will be more prismatic shards. There will be more crystallariums, and there will be more hardwood. The auto grabber is forever. Don't reset, but the crystal area. We've got four crystallariums already. I'm not even concerned. Where are we at? Uh, we should be able to, to make floor 100 now. That's good. Even a little bit beyond floor 100 by the looks of it. I could have five. I could have five. You're not wrong. But have I been wanting for crystallariums in the, in the, in the recent past? No. Red slime egg? Well, would I get rid of anything for a red slime egg? I don't think I would, actually. No, probably not. Sorry to say it. There's moments like that where you wish that you'd gotten rid of the axe, I guess. Or the watering can. Money. Fifth crystal area is a 20% increase in jade production. Bro, I'm making like 16 jades a week. I don't need to. I don't need any more than that. You see how often I'm even going to Skull Cavern? Or 100, by the way. Oh my god. <laughs> Chat, this is this this is gonna be a hard one. It's gonna be a hard pill to swallow. <laughs> But swallow it, we will. There's not even. There's no chance of even a freebie on this floor. Chat, if there's a dinosaur egg on this floor, I will not reset. If I can get a dinosaur egg here, that'll be the linchpin. Otherwise, we're resetting 100%. Shars are trying to seduce me. I'm scouring every inch of this floor just to get just to give us the highest possible chance here. Not a high enough chance. All right. Appreciate it while you can, chat. Quick 07 to this lovely inventory. Run it back. Bye-bye, Prizzies. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Crystallarium. <laughs> there will be more. Don't worry. Don't you worry. Remove your axe and watering can, please. All right. You twist you, if you twisted my arm. You twisted my arm enough. The star shards stay though. The star shards stay. You can remove. I would literally remove the staircases from my inventory before I'd remove the star shard. I'm 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 committed to the star shards now all the way. 
what if this saves the run? It could. Maybe it's the difference maker. I'm, I'm always willing to test. This is reset three, right? We're officially on the third reset. There's no way it goes to four resets. It's just not possible. They wouldn't do me. They, they wouldn't do me dirty like that. Certainly not. All right, we're officially in treasure room territory. By the way, be on treasure room lookout. A little pomegranate sapling, starting off strong. Tree seeds, tree se or not tree seeds, but tree uh, saplings. They actually sell for like a decent amount, right? I remember that from when Charlie did like the the shoplifting mod way back in the day, and she like steal steal trees from like Pierre's shop and just like sell them for money. It was kind of cracked. Early treasure room is a good sign. I certainly hope so. That's my emotional support star shard. Speaking of emotional support, I kind of want to go to the mines and bring Gertrude home. I feel bad just leaving Gertrude, our, our emotional support rabbit, to just collect dust over in the mines. If nothing else, I at least want to move her to to be with the dwarf. That, that way they can at least like keep each other company in between the, the long visits, the long waits for Beatrix to visit. <laughs> the only human contact that either of them have. Dust bunny? No! Return to dust. Reduce to atoms. Bring her to Skull Cavern? I could bring her to Skull Cavern, actually, yeah. That said, we're almost done with the Skull, with Skull Cavern for the foreseeable future. So that would just be like trading one purgatory for another. Maybe I could put her, put her in the coop. She is a rabbit. Chat, what if I put her in the coop and and we she produces uh like like pink fur, like pink wool, a little plush wool, and and like no one's ever tried that before, and all and when we discover something new here. I skipped a hole. Uh uh, you didn't see anything. I fell three levels. She gave us rabbit's feet, little plush rabbit's feet. Oh, I did. I almost skipped that hole. 15 levels! <laughs> Holy moly! I think that might be the first time I've ever seen that. Jeez Louise. That, that one kind of hurt. Kind of hurt the knees, man. That's a big one. Straight down to, to this purple slime egg down here. Found the drop to Tartarus. Now can we get another another one even beyond this treasure room? We've never seen one above ten. They are exceedingly rare. And I think fifteen is the max, right? I'm pretty sure I remember that from uh from watching Shawnee stream the other day, actually. Shawnee stream with Blade. I learned something in that stream it, it, that you can like, uh, like there there can be a shaft that drops you 13 floors, and there can be a shaft that drops you 15 floors, but there can never be a shaft that drops you 14 floors. It's just the way the code works. Five more levels, and one more to boot. All right. Definitely not as fruitful of a run as last time. So I'm not too upset about this reset. Still, chalk up another reset. Put that up to four. Why not? 14? I don't remember the actual explanation for why, but it's just the way the game is coded. Run it back, baby. You've had 11 plenty of times. But have you ever had 15? You've had many 15 drops? 
But have you ever had 16? Now we're talking. That's legendary. So legendary that the code doesn't... It, it shouldn't even be possible in the code. But if you believe hard enough... If you come to Skull Cavern with this exact inventory setup, with the with the Star Shard and everything, 66 salads, you can do some arbitrary code execution and get yourself a 16 length shaft. You've had one several times. One shouldn't be possible, right? I thought the minimum was like three or two or something. One? You fell one floor? Just take the stairs at that point, man. If you take a drop shaft from 99, oh, you're right, because it always stops you at floor 100, right? Clever, clever. That's a, that's a sneaky little roundabout solution. You could get a, a one drop that way. Would it say it only dropped you one floor, or would it still say, like, the number that it was supposed to be, and then just, like, put you on floor 100? I feel like it might say one, actually, for real. I feel like it would actually figure that one out. Oops. Gotta get some extra freebies to make up for that one. This might be the first time we don't make it to floor 100 because of that mistake. Hopefully not. Oh my gosh, the, the dinosaurs? There's, there's too many dinosaurs, I'm scared. It says you dropped one floor. It doesn't say you dropped one floors? Eric Baroni thought of everything. He's a master level coder. Accounting for, for the possibility of one floor, even though it doesn't normally happen. Crazy. That's a zoo. A little energy tonic. Honestly, might be the most disappointing treasure chest possible. Four energy tonics? It's just so boring. Nobody wants that. Nobody goes into Skull Cavern, gets four energy tonics, and they're, and they're like, Yes, that just made my day. Not a single soul. I mean, they're okay. 500 energy, 225 health. It's pretty good. There's a patch, so it's not surprising he thought of the plural slash singular thing. I guess if it was top of mind for him like that, then yeah, that does make sense. Clover Quartz, welcome on in. Happy we were able to catch one live here. Good to see ya. Hope work's been treating you right. Just quick, quickly juke that serpent. Can't catch me. I'm fast as heck. I'm fast as heck. You can't catch me. You can't catch me. Oh, they caught me. Okay. Um, quickly consume salad. Welcome on in, Ranchalotl. Good to see you. Oh. <laughs> Look at all these bugs swarming around. I love the floors that just have like 10,000 bugs on them when all you need is a knife. It's so funny. Just seeing the bugs all like in like lockstep like that or lock flight. Something about it just tickles my fancy. I should use the dropped one floor bit for a trivia. I did actually do some work on the um, on the next round of Stardew Jeopardy. I think I've got most things finalized for that. I definitely want to do a trial run still, um, but I, I think I'm I think that might be in the nearer future than any of us surmise. Hey, cactus seeds, near and dear to my heart. Synchronized bug dancing. The best kind of dancing. Double treasure room? Oh my, almost back to back, too. Can we get the triple right at the end here? Break the crates for good luck. Break the chest for good luck. Oh, he, we, he went and really did it. Last staircase into a treasure room into an auto grabber. All right. 
But it, it could still happen. Chat, it could still happen. It could still happen. There's, there's, there's never say never. All right, we can say never now. Run it back. Reset five. You can break the chest. I know, right? You just literally, like, curb stomp the chest. It's so funny. Okay, um... Oh, yeah, I'm not looking for anything. I'm putting these away. Perfect. I love trivia, by the way. I love, like, I love doing trivia, and I love, like, making up trivia questions and, like, testing other people on them. I always, I find both aspects of it fun. But whenever I'm making up my own questions, I have to be, I've, I've had to learn to pull myself back. Because a lot of the time I'll be like, what's, like, the most obscure trivia I can find? But that doesn't make it fun. That just makes it so, like, it's, like, n like you ask the question and everyone's gonna be like, uh, what the heck? It's not, it's not, it's more fun if it's, like, a hard question. But, like, there, people could still realistically know it. But when you're actually making the questions, it's easy to get lost in the trap of, like, oh, the question's too easy. But you only think it's too easy because you're currently in the in the throngs of research. And, uh, and so, like, all that knowledge is right at the forefront of your mind. But the people, when you, when you ask the question to people, they're not going to have done, like a, like, a vast amount of research in all likelihood. So they're just going to be working off of ambient knowledge of it, and it's and something that seems like a like a moderately easy question to you might be like the most insanely difficult question of all time. Yeah, the pressure of actually playing the game definitely factors in too. There's a there's there's a lot more that goes into it. So I've learned to start like dialing back the difficulty of questions just to just for that reason because I realize I can fall into that trap pretty easily. But you gotta strike a fine balance, because it is possible to go too far in the other direction and just ask questions that are, like, way too basic. I feel like that's less of a hazard, but it's still a, it's still a possibility. Super obscure trivia is only fun once a game, then it gets frustrating if all the questions are like that. I'm with you, yeah. Having, like, one, maybe two, obscure, like, super obscure trivia questions... It makes it so you can actually, like, learn something while you're doing- YES! <laughs> oh, that's- that's the ticket, dude. That's the ticket. Anytime we get lost in, like, some kind of, like, weird banter and stop talking about the game, that's when it finally gives it to us. That's when it actually comes through in the clutch. Second auto-grabber... ...on deck. And I'm not gonna forget this time. Chat, I'm not gonna forget this time. We're going another floor deep. Alright, no double. There's no double. I'm look I'm looking for one. Oh, don't don't die. Don't die. Don't freaking kill me now. Don't stop me now. You died and dropped one auto grapher. <laughs> Could you imagine? All right, get me the heck out of here. Get me the heck out of dodge. There we go. All right. You know what this means, chat? Do you know what this means? Number one, four to six reset believers. All thirty-three percent of you. Congratulations. You win a, a crisp high five. We can have cows now. That is absolutely correct. We can go and get cows. We can get sheep. We can get goats. We can get, uh, I mean, we can't really get pigs because the auto grabber doesn't work for pigs. We can go fill up that barn today. When Marnie's open Wednesday, right? Pretty sure she's open Wednesday. Also, we're going to hit up the Oasis real quick here. Oh, a visitor. Yes, that's me, the visitor. And I will buy two star fruit seeds. And be on my merry way. We farming. We're actually, we're actually, get, we actually get to play the game. Finally, we get to play the game. Pigs count for forge level. It's true. Yeah, once we get some forging goals, then pigs are a little more realistic. But until then, it's going to be a hard sell. Yeah, I will need more hay and reserve to get through winter. You're not wrong, Lisa. But I'm willing to do it. Yo, perfect song as well for, for our victory here. Great timing on the song. And the luau's coming up. I, I couldn't have asked for anything more. All right. 
So we want to plant these starfruit seeds in a, in a spot that is... Um, do I not have, like, cave carrots in here already? It's fine. We want to plant the starfruit seeds in a spot that is attainable, but not going to be, like, smushed and smothered by debris, right? I'm going to need to grab my hoe here in order to get everything set up. You need silos. I've got a lot of grass to cut at the end of fall. I could, yeah, I could just cut all the grass like at the end of fall to get a bunch of hay if I if I loaded up a couple more silos. Jesse, that's actually like a pr that's actually a pretty solid idea. Instead of like buying all the hay from Marnie, I could just like build like I don't know two more silos, and then uh, we'd have a lot we'd have a lot of grass we can cut. Quick rundown of the steps to get the blue discus. Um, basically, we need to complete the animal bundle and the quality crops bundle from the community center in order to get the rewards from them, just to make sure we have those rewards. Then we can pivot to Joja to complete the rest of it that way, which unlocks Willy's boat. Then we bomb some mahogany trees for the hardwood, which we've already started planting and growing down in the south part of the farm here. Get up to 200 hardwood that way, however many, uh, however many years that's going to take. And then, um... We've already got the battery packs. So we'll have the iridium soon enough. And we'll be good to go. It's basically the extent of it. Bomb some hay out of the barn, grab it all out of the hopper, and then cut grass to fill up again, repeat. I could do that. I guess we could we do have we do have two chests. I could I could I could like get we have like two chests that are just like free right now. I could uh I could use them instead to, like, store the extra hay. Then we only have to worry about, like, one silo. That might be the better way to go about it. Either way, before before it gets too late, I am going to go... And before I, like, just, like, forget about it entirely, let's go get some barn animals. Store hay in the auto-grabbers. That's true. That is true, actually. All right. Before anything else, we got to get uh, the animals who are going to eat the hay. Eat the hay. All right, so we're starting with some cows. It, it doesn't matter what color cows they are. We're not going to get chocolate milk from brown cows, no matter how hard we try. Choose a new barn for your white cow. Tricky? What did you say to me? All right. Um, we were going to name these after, like, mathematical concepts, right? Because we, we were naming all the coop animals after, like, elements. We're naming the... Naming the barn animals after mathematical concepts like Matrix, even though that's not the originator of Matrix in my name, but it makes sense. Vector? We'll go with Vector. I'm going to need your guys' help more on the mathematical concepts than on the uh, <laughs> than on the elements, for sure. Send little Vector to your new home right away. Isn't Vector a character from Sonic? All right, we're going to get a second cow. For my new white cow. Fan yeah, you can't say that. What the heck? <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, Fermat. We got Fermat, Euler, Tangent. Do one name Matrix. I can't be that self-indulgent. Binomial, Integral, Derivative, Axis. You know, I'm not gonna go Axis, but you put me on the right path. We're gonna go with Axiom. I like Axiom. And the little axiom. These are such like intense names for, for cute little cows. I want a brown cow now. How now, brown cow? Alright, brown cow. Gretchy. Cosine. Cosine the cow. I can cosine that cosine. And we'll do another cow. This will be four cows. We got two white cows, two brown cows. Sika? Psyche? Psyche? That's not your name. Fermat? Fermoot? <laughs> I can't resist, dude. I can't resist. Send a little Fermoot. Alright. Um, purchase animals. That's four cows. We want some goats as well. Alright, Shilbo. 
That's a sh that's a shill name if I've ever heard one. The the T is not pronounced in Fermat, so it's just Fermu. That's great. <laughs> All right. Um, this goat, Monty Hall. I I named this goat Monty. Monty for the Monty Hall problem. Monty Hall. It does it doesn't Mo Monty Hal. Monty Hall. I'm just gonna go Monty. I like Monty. Monty the goat. Graham for Graham's number. We got a second goat incoming. They do reproduce for free. You're not wrong, but I don't want to. Ain't nobody got time for that. Uh, Graham the goat. Got a cow named Axiom, and then a goat with like, all my goats have these like normal freaking names. I'm getting some sheep. I'm get. I'm getting. I'm getting sheep, and I don't care who knows, dude. I'm, I want some sheep on my farm. Choose a new barn for my new sheep. Ta Bell, Taco Bell. Why? Cause sheep are cute. Avogadro. <laughs> I like Avogadro. Av Avogadro. Did I spell that right? Avogadro. Avogadro. Thanks. You don't need sheep. Watch me do it again. Oh, you're so right. Alge... Algeba? Wait. Algeba. Algeba? <laughs> it's a great name. Good call. Alright. Send a little Algeba to her new home right now. There we go. Perfect. Uh, we don't need any more animals. We don't need any pigs. We don't need any more of the other ones for right now. Save some room for the ostriches and the pigs. I think we're good to go. Don't forget a heater. I might as well buy the heaters while I'm here. That's a good idea. Just, just so I don't forget. Supplies shop. We'll get two heaters. I'll be on my way. Name one just E. <laughs> Yeah, have you considered that the sheep are adorable? It's a pretty pretty hefty consideration, I would say. More seaweed, by the way. Stack that seaweed, baby. Okay. Uh, go ahead and drop the heater in here real quick. Heater is going to go... We'll just tuck it away in the corner. Right there. Perfect. Now let's go pay a visit to our brand new, fresh and fancy, fully stocked... Adorable little barn. I'll open up the door in a second, but I just want to—I just want to see them all. See them all in here. Look! Oh my gosh! Look at these little lambs with their rosy cheeks. These got they are so cute. Chat, chat. You can't tell me these sheep are not cute. You can't tell me. Look at look at these little ba lambs. It's so adorable. <laughs> and the baby goats, the baby cows, is beautiful. Is beautiful. All right, be free, little ones. Be free. Enjoy. Enjoy your fresh pastures. All right, now we got to figure out where I'm planting these star fruit. Where shall I plant the star fruit? We got to... Baby goats are perfect. Baby goats are pretty cute. You want to pet them so badly, I know, right? All right. Where can I plant the star fruit safely? Safely, but still like close enough that it's not a pain to go out of my way to water it. Name the next one Lambda. Oh, that would have been such a good name. That's such a good name. Alright. Where am I planting? This is a new tree, by the way. That's a that's a new tree, I'm pretty sure. Hmm. I could clear, like, a little bit of grass out of the way here. But I don't know if I trust that. What about, like... Right there. Like, right here. No, it's not tillable. Not tillable. Can I plant on the path to robins? Like, over here? It's a little out of the way. I could plant some, some around here, though. 
What about like over here? Not tillable. By the mushroom cave? There's a little too much debris going on over here. I think I should clear some grass. You're gonna lurk for a while. While no worries, Ranchalotl. Enjoy your lurk dump. I think I'm gonna clear like a tiny little bit of grass. By the greenhouse? It's a bit of a trek, but I mean, it's, we only have to grow these two and it's only gonna be like 13 days. It's not that bad. I just plant it by the greenhouse. Does this work? Like right there. All right, that works. We don't need a scarecrow either, right? Because it's only two crops. I mean, I'm like pretty confident we don't need a scarecrow, but why would I not put a scarecrow down? It, it just, it, I feel like to be on the safe side, like what if there's like something that none of us are, uh, that none of us are aware of? And we just lose those like star drop those those star fruit that would just be annoying so guess what no i want i still want you on keg duty you you're a summer you're rare crow get on out of here you can plant crops in this game i was waiting for the greenhouse that's why i'm planting them so near the greenhouse just to be on the safe side thought only the greenhouse was plantable i mean look at the re how are you gonna, supposed to farm in the rest of this all right protect these with your life Why risk it, exactly? There's just no reason. Alright. That was a very, very productive day. Thank you to Skull Caverns for, for blessing us. Alright. Um, Speaking of Skull Caverns, we still have to do one more run. Now we have two Iridium Bars to get. That's it. I, I do have... Let me see. It might be better off... I mean, I don't want to play the Geode Lottery again. I really don't. I kind of prefer Skull Caverns to the Geode Lottery. To get like the like the iridium ore, probably the better way to go about it is to like get magma geodes and just like get the ore that way. But I just find it more fun to do skull cavern. Can't wait to see where the can't see where the hut will go. We'll figure it out when they, when when we get to that. Don't worry about it. Don't you worry about that. You let me worry about that, Jay. Yeah, I just enjoy skull cavern more. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and say and say it. I'm not afraid to say it. We're going to go ahead and I'll put this away for now. Um, keep the rest. And I'll get a pumpkin soup. Skull Cavern is better content. That's that's also highly true. All right. Perfect. Locked and loaded. And we got a luau tomorrow. Don't let me forget about that. Put the axe away. Never. I don't want. I don't want to have to get the axe out if I got debris. Dead. Fine, I'll put the axe away. You twisted my arm. You made. You made a good argument. You said put the axe away, and then I thought about it, and I'm like, yeah, I should put the axe away. All right, I'm gonna keep the watering can though. Go to sleep for the night. Yeah, yeah. Sounded much like a parent there. Don't make me turn this stream around. I will. We'll, t we'll turn this stream right around right now and go home. Don't make me restart this randomizer. Not star drop luck day. That's totally fine. I'm willing to take a little, a little reprieve, a little break. All right, we got to remember to water these star fruit every single day. We planted them relatively late in the season. So it's it's gonna it's gonna matter to keep them watered every single day, so that way we don't miss it. Trash soup day. What are we putting in the soup? What are our options to put in the soup? Even like I, I, we put in sap last time. Worked out pretty well, I would say. Um, this time I don't know. We can't we can't put literal trash in the soup. I'm pretty sure it just doesn't let you. Do we have a good option though? I can put more more <laughs> more sap in there this time. Just even more sap, a little mixed seeds. Put a single stone. But stone soup is like a real thing. What if I put some green algae in? Is green algae good? 
little algae soup. Let me see. Luau. Control F. Green algae. Green algae is a bad response. It's not the worst response. The player loses 50 friendship points with the villagers if these items are used. Pog! Let's go do it. I don't think we lose it with the dwarf because she doesn't come to the luau, so we're fine there. We might as well do it now before like we actually have any friends that attend the luau while we have the chance. Yeah, green algae is a bad response. Let's go, let's, go, let's go do that. Seaweed's a little too valuable. Green algae is, is much easier to come by than, than, than seaweed. Sorry to my villagers. It's not as bad as the sap. It's not It's not going to be as bad of a response as the sap. So we can be thankful for that, but they're still not going to be happy with it. What response does a cave carrot get? If I had to guess, I would say cave carrot's like a neutral response. That's minus 50 points from Haley. Yeah, but zero minus 50 is still zero, at least when it comes to friendship points. Like Haley, who, right? Am I right? Beatrix, I mean, Beatrix does know Haley. She talked. <coughs> Ooh, pardon me. She talked to her like one time. Yeah, Joja Cola might be even better in the soup, honestly. Robin's project need 80 hardwood. Hopefully, someone else will fulfill that, and then we can just go rob Robin blind. It's right in her name, Rob Robin. Yo, welcome on in, Nico. Good to see you. Can you can you even lose friendship points from max friendships? I mean, I think you. Pr I'm pretty sure you can. Yeah. And another green algae, just to boot. Very sorry to hear you had a tough anxiety day there, Nico. Send in lots of love your way. Get some get some argon love for Nico. Or heart emojis, whatever whatever will suffice. Welcome on in. Good to see you. Hope your day gets better from here. Alright, to the luau. The most exciting day of the year. Show me that star fruit. Ooh! You love to see it. You absolutely adore to see it. Anyway, I don't know what the heck the, the rest of these people are doing. Field snack? Field, there's no way field snack is like the worst response or a bad response. Are we going Joja Cola or are we going Green Algae? What are you guys feeling? I'm feeling a little. I'm feeling a little like Joja Cola. We did commit to Green Algae earlier on, but Joja Cola is right there. Joja, join us, thrive. I mean, it is on brand. I added Joja Cola to the soup, the can, and everything. <laughs> Joja Cola won't poison anybody. Neither will the green algae in all likelihood, but... Alright. Look sharp. The gov governor is here for a visit. Also, who are you? How did you get in here? I feel like that's the accurate response, because Lewis so rarely sees me. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's go. Careful with that soup, Governor. It's gonna be a little crunchy. Gonna be a little crunchy. I hope you, hope you haven't had your your daily supply of of iron yet. Cause like there's like metal in the soup, and iron. Although it's, I guess it's made of aluminum. Hope you haven't had your daily supply of of aluminum yet. <laughs> oh, got him. Dot 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 dot. Indeed. Um, it's actually kind of disgusting. I think I'll pass on the soup this year. <laughs> Yo, brutal! I worked hard on that soup, dude. I found that Joja Cola like a full hour before this festival started. Come on, man. It's actually kind of disgusting. <laughs> so rude. And Lewis goes in anyway. He goes in for seconds. He did a double slurp. Yuck. Someone must have ruined it with poor quality ingredients. Don't look at me. I'm wearing a cool hat. It couldn't be me. Does, an does anyone want any? <laughs> they all well, can't let soup go to waste, even if it is trash. The soup wasn't very good, but otherwise the luau was a success. Fantastic news. Owned. I feel like we sufficiently owned all the villagers there. 
All right. Uh, sell the field snack. Go deposit the beautiful, luscious annual star fruit, as well as the green algae. We're up to four. We're basically up to six star fruit because we're growing the two over there. So, I mean, three more to go, three more luau's, and we'll be well on our way to Ginger Island. Well, not quite to Ginger Island, but at least like a pretty significant step towards it. Never cook for me, please. You telling me you don't want a full metal can of soda in your soup? Can't imagine why. How do the villagers know who to lose slash gain friendship with at the luau? I think they just like determine like, like if the soup is bad, they just like decide it's everybody's fault and they hit everybody. That's the way I would do it. I'd be like, I don't, I can't possibly know who put the bad ingredient in there. So I'm just going to blame literally everyone. Marnie is a snitch. That's also possible. She is right there. She did see me dump the whole can right into the right into the potluck and walk away snickering. Reminds you of some concoctions your brother's friends made in high school. Disgusting, but everyone would have to try just to see how disgusting. It's like the purple sauce made in the in Eddie's Million Dollar Cook-Off. One of the best Disney Channel original movies ever ever produced. There's no way that sauce was any good, but everybody tried it and they were like, yo, it's the best sauce of all time. Rain day makes it so we don't have to water, which is nice. Does mean we go through the hay a little bit more, but pros and cons and all that. Chat, what's your favorite DCOM? The Disney Channel original movie? That's what the that's what the cool kids are calling it, right? DCOM. There there are correct answers. I mean, I think honestly most Disney Channel original movies are kinda like bad, but they're like good bad. They're like fun bad. But some of them are also like pretty good. Freaky Friday? That's not a Disney Channel original, is it? It's freak I thought Freaky Friday was just like its own thing with Lindsay Lohan. All right, I'm going to go water the crops first, and then we'll go trade the staircases. Can the stream never end, please? Unfortunately, I do have to work in like, uh, like three and a half hours. So it's going to have to end eventually, I'm afraid. But we'll be back next week. Is Freaky Friday 2018 a DCOM? Freaky, there's a Freaky Friday 2018. There's only one Freaky Friday in my heart. There was marked one that was Mark Twain and me back in the 90s. Is that the animated one that's like everyone's scared of now? Mark Twain's Adventures or whatever. Eddie's Million Dollar Cook-Off, good choice. Hocus Pocus, never saw it. High School Musical, classic. The Halloween Town series. Very much so. That's that's absolutely... It might be the best of all of them. Good Luck Charlie was your son's fave. Isn't Good Luck Charlie an actual show, not a movie? Either way, I mean, Good Luck Charlie, I, did, I do remember seeing that. And, uh, and being entertained by it, so... The Lizzie McGuire movie? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lives rent-free in my brain. When they trick the guy into like, like he's like supposed to be like lip singing, but then he's not lip singing and he's singing all bad, and the crowd's like, "Boo, get off the stage!" And then Lizzie and the the other like celebrity girl they sing and they like have like a, a great girl power moment at the end there. Classic, classic of all time. No spoilers. All right, uh, we're good to go to sleep for the night, right? Yeah, yeah. Lemonade mouth. I have, I've never heard of Lemonade Mouth in my life. I'll take your word for it, though. Little gold pyramid, not quite good enough. A 
Lemonade Mouth wins? What the heck is Lemonade Mouth? That's not a real thing. I'm just picturing, like, isn't there, like, a lemon, like, a character from Adventure Time that has, like, a lemon for a head? That's all I'm picturing when, when you say Lemonade Mouth. I've never even seen Adventure Time. Dude's probably called something, like, Lemon Drop. It's a bad movie. Is it good bad, though? Or bad bad? Alright, I gotta go grab my axe. Because it is debris day, lest we forget. Lemon grab. The better name. I'll give, I'll give it to him. I seem like the kind of person to enjoy mit lemonade mouth. I don't know if I should take that as a as a compliment or not. Chat, oh my gosh. It might not seem like it, but this is a very pivotal day. This piece of wood has been here for like years. This has been here for like so long <laughs> because it's been trapped on the inside of like a field of like a circle of stones. We finally get to get rid of this cursed log. Get out of here. Good riddance. Oh my gosh. That felt good, dude. That felt so good. It's a bit of a bittersweet moment. I was kind of getting used to that to that uh, log being there. But now it feels kind of like like a different place without it around. You know what I mean? Oh, seven to that log, I guess. Logs really do eat the stone. Logs can eat the stone. If Blade is to be trusted, and I have no reason not to trust him, he said that um, as far as debris goes. Uh, logs and stones, or like sticks and stones, may break my bones, but but fiber will never hurt me. But he also said that um, sticks and stones can produce sticks or stones. Like a stick could produce a stone or another stick, and a stone could produce a stick or another stone. And both of them can overwrite one another. And fiber only produces fiber and can overwrite um, sticks and stones as well, so... So fiber is kind of, is, is like S-tier debris, and the other ones are like C-tier debris. Officially a high school graduate. Congrats, Karita. Gonna go eat cake soon? That, that is very big. You made it to the end. Congratulations. Hope you had a fun uh, graduation ceremony. Literally don't remember anything about my graduation ceremony other than that, uh... Other than that, I, I think I had... Yeah, we went to Peter's Peter's drive through for for drinks afterwards. Which might just dox myself, but it's fine. <laughs> Peter's drive it's a great place and like I don't actually it might be like a chain now. Uh, think about it. It's a place out in Calgary though. Which is where, like, it was like the whole like graduation ceremony took place in downtown Calgary, which is true. I think of like all areas around, like in like southern Alberta. So, all the more reason I should continue Fiber's farm. You're not wrong. Fiber is king. Animal sounds are soothing. I'm so not used to them, and even even so, they're nostalgic to me. Yo, look at these trees. Look, we got four mahogany trees on deck already. And I see a fifth one, like, waiting in there. What is... What are you... What are you <laughs> do you see that goat? Goat was just kind of, like, uh... Doing, like, a stanky leg or something. Graduation ceremony is just so boring that you didn't even bother... That you didn't bother going to a third one. We're starting to get our, our animal supplies. You love to see it. Very, very much love to see it. How many trees do we need for the hardwood? That's a great question, actually. How much how much hardwood does one mahogany tree drop? It's not like a guaranteed amount. It's like it's like a var variable amount. So it's gonna be a variable amount of trees. Eight to thirteen each. 153, okay. So eight to thirteen each. So, and we need 180 more hardwood in addition to the 20 that we already have. So 180 divided by, if assuming we get like worst odds and get eight on every single one, we need 20, 
four trees, 23 trees. That's not that bad. 23 trees. 22 and a half trees. And we probably need fewer than that. Like if we get up to like 20 trees. Plus like the, the, the little bit we get from the stump. Don't you get like one from every stump? Estimate 10 on average. So like if, if we get up to like 20 trees, we're kind of vibing. Didn't take long to get four. I mean, it has been like half a year. <laughs> but as far as like, as far as like tree lifespans go, you know what? That's not long at all. You're right. If I eat food that boosts my foraging level, can I get seeds from the trees? Honestly, don't know. That's probably worth experimentation. I can probably, probably test around with that in between streams if I need to. But that would be a good idea if I, if like I could eat the foraging buff before I bomb the trees and get seeds from them so I could replant, replant more mahogany trees after that. I think that would be uh, that would be a good idea for sure. Oh. Ow now, brown cow. Alright, I'm feeling pretty confident about our debris situation right now. Feeling pretty good about it. Did I water the starfruit today? I honestly don't remember. I assume I did, but I'll go double check anyway. Looks watered to me. Never hurts to double check. Is my goal to plant mahogany trees and wait for it to get struck by lightning? Could you imagine if that was the if that was the strat? That would be so much worse. Oh god. I don't even want to think about that. If that was the only way to get them without like getting some uh foraging experience, that would be so cursed. I would do it. I would definitely do it. But I think I would probably first like go through the mines and get them from crates and barrels like we were doing before instead. Alright, I think we're good. I'll go ahead and put my axe away. What's perfection in this game? Pixcraft, welcome on in. Perfection is basically, um, it's a little more than this, but basically it's completing like the all these collections here. So like you gotta like sell one of everything in the game more or less. You gotta catch every fish. Um, you have to donate all this to the museum, all that good stuff. You have to cook every recipe. It's basically doing everything there is to do in the game. It takes a very long time. Exclamation point rules if you're, if you're curious, but if you've never really seen the game, it might be all Greek to you. We're good to go, right? There are indeed recipes, yeah. Yo, rainy day, let's go. Check in with Gus. I just have a good feeling about today for some reason if I call Gus. Fried eel, that is a plus one luck buff, but I mean, we already have some, some pumpkin soup on deck, so I'm not too concerned about that. There we go. There you go. Yeah, Lisa just dropped a great link that will explain perfection better than I ever probably could. Thank you for that, Lisa. All right. Welcome on in, not Psycho Paul. How's the grind going? Pretty well, honestly. We've already got we've got the two auto grabbers that we wanted. We've got a a fully stocked barn and coop already on deck. Good to go. We're growing the two star drop that I'm that I'm physically allowed to grow. Honestly, things could not be going any better. I would say. Chat, what's the most sus animal? What's, like, the animal you look at and you're most likely to be like, I don't trust that animal? Just, like, just by, like, appearance alone. You just, like, look at it and you're like, that's giving me, that dude's giving me, like, a bad vibe. Michelle with the snap pick of Anteater. Is Anteater a sus ant? Anteater's pretty sus. I'm not gonna lie. Pigs? I mean, pigs, they have, like, the scientific name sus, right? Skunk, <laughs> skunks are. You know what? I'll give that to you. You look at a skunk and you d and you don't know what's about to happen. You, it could be totally fine, or it could be the worst day of your life. 
No one knows what a Hyrax is, but they're very sus. But Google, let me Google that, Hyrax. <laughs> He's got such a sus face. He's looking at me like I'm sus, dude. I gotta, sh I, I wanna show this dude. Hold on a second. Wait, I, I might have to... <laughs> That's a great sus pick, honestly. That is a fantastic sus animal. Hold on, though. Chat. Chat, look at this dude. <laughs> he's lo he's looking at you, and he's like, "What you what you just say to me? What did you do? What are you doing there? What are you doing, pal?" He's he's like, he's like reverse. He's like he sees that you calling him sus, and he's reversing the sus back onto you with the like Uno reverse card. This is a great pick. I've never I've never seen a Hyrax, but you were you were absolutely correct on that on that pick. You have a new favorite animal. <laughs> Most birds, pretty sus. Sturgeon, peacocks. That's a Pokemon. It kind of did have Pokemon energy, didn't it? It kind of looked like a Watchog almost. Well, I mean, Watchog is definitely more intense, but uh, but it was definitely giving me like Watchog vibes. Welcome on in, Abby. Lurking on your lunch break. What are you having for lunch? We're currently discussing what the most sus animal is. Am I the only one that feels like giraffes are kind of sus? Like, I look at a giraffe, and I feel like it's it, it seems docile, but that's why I don't trust it. Trust it. It's like such a... It seems like such an alien creature to me. You can trust the rusty spotted cat. It's a small, small kitten. Small as a kitten, and that's very concerning. It's like a wild cat, but it's small as a kitten. Giraffes are just doing their thing. They're just vibing out. You think? I don't know. Giraffes? I look at them, and I'm like... I don't know, giraffe. You've been seeming sus lately. Almost like there's an imposter among us. I know, I know I saw- Don't lie to me, giraffe! You sussy baka. It's a pre-recorded message in a foreign language. You can't understand it at all. That's too relatable. <laughs> Have I seen Okapis? Okapis aren't real. They're like half zebra, half like donkey, right? Or something like that? I don't, I don't even know. They're like of the zebra lineage. What are giraffes hiding in their necks? Yeah, why do they need so much space in their necks? Sphinx cats? Sphinxes seem pretty sus. Yeah, you're not wrong. Sussy baka is something you never thought you'd hear me you'd hear me say. I'll say I'll, I'll say all sorts of things that you never expect me to say. Okawaii desu? Nani? You gotta, you gotta throw him a curveball every now and again. That's not even the curviest ball I can throw. I can definitely, I can definitely get wilder with the curves, but, but that's as far as I'm willing to go right now. Don't do that again. What do you mean, Hawaii desu? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, copies are not actually related to ze to zebras. That's very sus for sure. Say uwu. Uwu? Ay 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 ay. All right. Um, we're gonna sell this muscle, by the way. Go pet pie and just forget this day ever happened. <laughs> sheep fish freak you out, low key. Sheep fish? What on earth is a sheep fish? Sheep fish. Ah, <laughs> the very first picture on on Google is like like most of these pictures are fine to me, but the very first picture on Google is actually like creepy pasta fuel. It's a it's like a fish with human teeth. 
I hate it. Why did you curse me with that? Don't Google that. Don't Google that, chat. Argon as an e-girl is my new canon. I'll accept that. There's probably a different life where I'm an e where I'm an e-girl. I'm like VTuber adjacent, so I'm not I'm not that far off, right? Star drop luck on a Sunday! Oh baby! All right, we're dropping off this. We're taking 16 jades to trade for even more staircases. Load up on the triple shot. Load up on the pumpkin soup. Requires one coal. I don't think you know what you're talking about, game. And we're on our way. All right, we'll pick up that battery pack on our way home. Also, can't forget to water the star fruit after we're done today. Um, let's get a pole going. Let's go get a pole going. Start a poll. We're not looking for auto grabbers or anything anymore. We're straight up just looking for iridium. How many resets for iridium? Get your zero reset ticket in right now. We haven't seen iridium in so long. We're, we're due. We're definitely due. Four to six. Seven plus. Ninety-one staircases to my name. The fact that I'm gonna have to trade for those staircases every time, like get the jades and trade for the staircases, is a little bit annoying. But hopefully, I mean, I mean, if we just get it on this attempt, which you know, exclamation point optimism, then uh, then we don't have to worry about that anymore. Zero gang, rise up. What is this? What is this four to six reset supremacy? You guys don't believe in me? Don't use I'm I'm holding the star shards. You guys you guys have taken that into account, right? I'm holding the star shards. I ate pumpkin soup. It's star drop luck day. I don't know what more you expect here. Negative one resets. We we already got the iridium. You're zero gang this time around. I'm gonna make you proud. I will make you proud, Daddy. Sorry to cut you off, Elizabeth if you still even remember that name, but I'm afraid you've been misinformed. Ah, get out of here. All right. Dark cowboy hat. I mean, it was such a, such a non thing. I'm like, you know, we're, we, we're just building a collection of dark cowboy hats now across time and space. Not even concerned about it. You thought this was PG-13? This is P I'm allowed to say daddy in PG-13 streams. How many hats does one character need? Um, yes. All of them. Daddy is literally just father. Exactly! Petition to rename Father's Day to Daddy Day? How do you guys feel about that? You thought this was an 18 plus stream? I mean, I am 18 plus. In fact, I'm 28 plus. No. <laughs> what do you? What's wrong with Daddy Day? I don't understand. What? What? Why? <laughs> Now you're going to give me the auto grabbers. Okay, I see how it is. I, you're not going to trick me. You're not going to tempt me. If we get the iridium, then uh, then that could be like another coop or a barn or something we could set up. <laughs> but uh, but I'm, not, I'm not about to not reset just because of that. Game literally trolling me. There's more than 18 people here. True, true that. If you can have Daddy Day, you want Mommy Day. I mean, it's got to be equal for sure. I would, I would rename Mother's Day to Mommy Day. You call your dad Daddy. Always did. Nothing wrong with it. It's people are just like weird about it on the internet for some reason. Go 
Oh, getting lots of freebies already. 35. Why why is the why is the staircase thing pulsating like that? Thing going bloom, bloom, bloom. Not a fan of that. Yeah, don't worry about it. We're, we're reclaiming the word daddy and mommy and all that. Nothing wrong with it at all. Me saying ooh woo and daddy in the same stream is like Christmas. <laughs> I mean, depending on what you type in chat, I could you could probably get me to say a lot of stuff, but <laughs> Don't don't press your luck though. It is still a PG to thirteen stream at the end of the day. We just like to you know press the boundaries of what PG thirteen really means. And not even really like I think I think most of the time, even with these like even with the uh, tangential innuendos and stuff, little seed maker. I think we're still with it well within the boundaries of PG-13. Like PG-13 movies are allowed like one F word, right? So I'm not about to drop one just because like I don't like that word most of the time. It's got a time and a place and uh and I very seldom find myself in the time or the place to use it. Yeah, we just made it to floor 100, but that, I, I didn't even realize how close we were on the staircases there. Holy. Apologies once again to my zero reset believers. This is not our day. Next time. Next time. Wario impression is, is X-rated for sure. Very disturbing. What's wrong with a Wario impression? I'm a Wario. I'm a number one. Ah, that's 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 Wario to me. All right, hold on. We gotta. I gotta remember to trade these. I'm gonna need, need to get in the habit of doing that. That was really good. Maybe I found my calling. Every so often, I'll just do an impression, and I'll, and people will be like, "That's really good," and I'll be like, "Okay." But then I get too self-conscious and never do it again. <laughs> I do think my voice has like a broader range than I probably give it credit for, but I'm I'm definitely, you know, I'm no I'm no sung one. I'm no sung one, that's for sure. Do I have a hi ya impression like links like the link scream? Let me try. Let me try. Hi ya! Nope, that wasn't it. It's about the closest I can probably get, though, without obliterating my throat. Didn't I have more staircases last time? Uh, maybe, maybe you, saw, you were talking about before I traded for more staircases just now. I'm pretty sure this is the same as last time. It was long. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, that's not it at all. I don't know what that was. Sing for us? You can't just say sing for us and then like expect me to do it. What am I your 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 karaoke machine? Your jukebox? You can't just you can't just get me to sing a song on demand like that. What do you take me for? I'm I'm a person too, you know. I, I'm not I'm not just a streamer. I'm not just here for your amusement. To say things like uh, like ooh woo and sussy baka and all this and all this stuff for your entertainment. Jukebox, mate. <laughs> Is that all you think of me? Is that all I am to you? Just a jukebox and a dopamine machine? If so, then I guess I'm doing my job right. Sing for us, funny man. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. 
You didn't you didn't say what to sing, so I'm I'm just I'm just gonna go off. What <laughs> whatever works exactly. Whatever comes to mind. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a partridge in a pear tree. On the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me two French hens. Wait, two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree. We're going, chat, we're going. On the third day of Christmas, my true love gave to me three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. On the fourth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. On the fifth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me... Everyone join in for this one. You gotta join in at home. Five golden rings, four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. On the sixth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me six geese a laying, five golden rings. Four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. It's starting to get complicated now. On the seventh day of Christmas, my true love gave to me seven swans a swimming, six geese a laying, five golden rings. Four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. I don't know if I'm going to get all the order of these right, by the way. On the eighth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me eight maids a-milking, seven swans a-swimming, six geese a-laying, five golden rings, four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. On the ninth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me Nine ladies dancing, eight maids a milking, seven swans a swimming, six geese a laying, five golden rings, four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. On the tenth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me ten lords a leaping, nine ladies dancing, eight maids a milking, seven swans a swimming, six geese a laying, five super meals. Four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. On the eleventh day of Christmas, my true love gave to me eleven drummers drumming, ten lords a leaping, nine ladies dancing, eight maids a milking, seven swans a swimming, six geese a laying, five golden rings. Four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves. And a partridge in a pear tree. On the twelfth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me twelve pipers piping, eleven drummers drumming, ten lords a leaping, nine ladies dancing, eight maids a milking, seven swans a swimming, six geese a laying, five golden rings, four quality sprinklers, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. Probably it was not right on the order of those at all, but you know what? Especially towards the end, you gotta get it gets a little confused, but hopefully that was alright. <laughs> Keep the sprinklers? Nah, we're resetting. This is a resettable offense. Chat, do you think they actually gave like like, cause they say like on like each day. Do you think they gave like the same gift? Like, like did that person who they're giving the gifts to? Did they get twelve partridges in a pear tree, or did they just get one partridge in a pear tree, and uh, and just sang about it twelve times? Exponential growth. You think? Is this everything I need? I think so. Yeah. That's a lot of pear trees. I mean, 12 pear trees is too many pear trees. Why bring the sword and pick? The pickaxe is there to get me out of, like, if rocks are all surrounding the uh, the ladder, then I can, like, at least mine one and hope that I don't get experience. The sword is there to, like, block a serpent if, I need, if I'm in a pickle or something. 
That's a whole lot of geese. <laughs> six geese a laying, six times, 36 geese, and they're all laying. That sounds pretty rough, yeah. How many golden rings do you get? You get like 40 golden rings or something like that? That's pretty good. 12 partridges is worse than 12 pear trees. I don't even know what a partridge is, to be honest with you. 35 golden rings. Okay. It's a respectable amount of golden rings. Especially if they're actually like golden rings, not just like gold plated. Thirty-five golden rings, one for each finger and toe. Ooh, early treasure room, the first possible treasure room. No iridium though. The Omni Geodes could lead to iridium. But in all likelihood they will not. All names for different types of birds. Is every every line a name for a different type of bird? Because it starts off with birds, but then it just kind of goes to like maids of milking and, and ladies dancing, and I'm like, what? They just like ran out of ideas for birds. But are ladies dancing? Are they birds? They're all birds? Pipers piping? That's too many birds, dude. Wait, are golden rings birds? Is it like, I'm picturing like a black bird with like a golden ring around his neck now or something. I never knew this. I never knew that they were all birds. It's just in. Argon has 35 toes and fingers. You don't? How do you think I'm so good at Stardew Valley? That was a joke. <laughs> I'm, I'm not good at this game. At least not as far as, like, you know... When you compare me to the likes of, like, Habu or anything like that, speedrunners who actually have, like, good good movement tech in this game, definitely not. I, I do not compare. Most sus is the person who wrote this. I do love that the super meals came along at the perfect time. That was, that was, that was really good. Oh, I thought I thought I saw a shaft, but again, yet again, it was just a rock. Yet again, I am fooled just by by a single dark rock in the out of the corner of my eye. Not gonna be able to make it to that one. It's all good. It's all good, man. Little life elixir. Can't assume that I'm human. Have you ever seen me and another human in the same place at the same time? That doesn't make any sense, but don't think about it too hard. What stops you from wearing four rings on each finger, though? That would be uncomfortable. I don't, I don't often wear rings. I can't even think of like the last time I put a ring on, but I feel like wearing more than one ring per finger is... Uh, I don't know. I feel, I feel like it just becomes a little cumbersome at that point. You're really gonna make me do it, huh? Bro? Okay, thank you. Depends on the rings. So are high heels, but many people wear them anyway. True. Can't discount that. Use some of those rings as earrings. What if you just like chain all the rings together and, and droop them from your ears until they hit the ground? Probably ill-advised. I would get, I would say that's, that seems like a little too much weight for the earlobe to bear. Or like if someone accidentally like steps on it, then uh, or if you accidentally step on it, probably gonna have a bad day. You're gonna have a bad time. Traditionally, when married, when married, women wear two rings on their thing on their ring finger. Okay, one for the marriage. What's the other one for? One's to signify, "Hey, I'm married." What What's the second ring about? Engagement. You're not engaged anymore. You're married. Toss that in the trash. <laughs> not really, but like. 
See, it just seems excessive to me. They're, it's probably, I mean, I guess they're both beautiful rings. Why would you not wear them? And it's, there's sentimental value to be sure. But you're not engaged. You're just like lying. You're lying at that point. You wear them both together forever. That's pretty cute. But it's also, uh, it's also a fallacy. But hey, no, no disrespect to anyone who who's doing it. I'm not trying to feed my. I, I, I'm just trying. Bro, I'm trying to drink my triple shot espresso. Can you stop matting at me? They often get attached into one ring, the one ring to rule them all. How do you even do that? You take them to the black to a blacksmith or a jeweler, I guess, and forge the rings into one. Take them up to the forge on top of Ginger Mountain. Uh, Ginger Mountain. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's called Ginger Mountain. I don't know. It's a mountain on Ginger Island. It's a volcano on Ginger Island. That's pretty sus right there. I'm gonna take a chance. I'm gonna take a chance on this one. It's literally floor two. We're about taking chances. Ginger Mountain, Charlie. It's a good throwback right there. BRB while I got my ring resized at the blacksmith. Why blacksmith worked with metals? Rings are made of metal. I don't see what the problem is. There's a style of ring combo where you have them welded together. To keep them organized? Do you weld them like like so that they're like one really long ring, or do you weld them together so that they're like two rings and then you can like wear them like one on your middle finger and one on your ring finger? And your and your fingers are just bound together forever. Like you and your partner. It's supposed to be symbolic, right? You gotta commit. They're basically one ring. If I'm ever in that position, I'm combining them so that there's still two rings, and I just, I just like, like handcuff my fingers together. I think that'd be more fun. It would make the rest of my life that much more challenging because I wouldn't be able to separate those uh, fingers most of the time. And you all know how I feel about a good challenge. Not the brass knuckle rings. Finger cuffs. I mean, finger cuffs are more like the ones, like the Chinese finger cuffs, where you put like one finger in each end, and then you just like, you're standing there like you're that one emoji. With your fingers all pressed together. Until you can figure out how to get it out. I was in a position one time where I was, I could have tried out like a Chinese finger trap like that. But, uh, but I was scared. I was scared that I wouldn't be able to get out. I was scared I'd be the one person that was never allowed out of the finger trap. Uh, congratulations, you're our millionth customer. You get to wear the finger trap forever. And I'll be like, guess this is my life now. Camel wants coffee. I can't imagine camel would be good. Camel would be good for a coffee is what I was about to say. I can't imagine coffee would be good for a camel. I also can't imagine that camel would be good for a coffee. Do camels sweat, do you think? Like, they live in the desert. I feel like things that live in the desert probably, like, don't sweat that much. Maybe they do. Maybe, maybe it's better to sweat in the desert than not to sweat. One of them is better than the other, but I can't remember why or which. Your camels have lots of heat dissipation methods. Yeah, so and sweating is probably not one of the more effective ones, so. Camel milk is a delicacy. I'm not about to go down the milk rabbit hole again. You can't trick me. They hoard water in their hump. Is that true, or is that just like an urban legend?
Because I think I've heard it both ways. I've, I've definitely heard, like, you know, the camels, they store water in their humps. But then, like, I've also heard that that's, like, just not true at all. And that their humps are, are for something entirely different. Hump is a fat deposit? That makes a lot more sense in my brain than it being, like, a, like a water tank built in. Almost had hummels. Camels have fat in their humps. Like, why am I confusing my words and my letters so much today? Although hummel is pretty great. Is that what a camel's hump is called? A hummel? Or is it just called a hump? If you had a hump, you would keep water in it. I don't think they have a choice. I think it's just, like, it's just there. Like, technically, you do have, like, humps. Like, all, like, all, like, your whole body could be considered to be, like, one big hump. Why not just fill the whole thing with water? You're already, like, 80% of the way there. There, might as well, you know, finish the job. Multiple stomach bags? There you go. Be, like, a cow with four stomachs. Aw, oh, shoot. <laughs> Rip. Well, at least we got to floor 100. Prismatic shard for the road, if I, if you don't mind. Probably not going to get to keep it, but what if... Nah. No luck, Chuck. If you were a kangaroo, you would not have kids and you would use your pouch for snacks. Based. Based and true take. If I was a kangaroo, if I ran the zoo. Underrated Dr. Seuss story, if I ran the zoo. You never hear anyone talk about that. Everyone just talks about the cat in the hat. Thing number one and thing number two. The, the freaking Lorax. The Lorax? You're going to tell me about the Lorax over, over if I ran the zoo? Or the Oblek? Or what about that one story? Anyone remember, know that one Dr. Seuss story? About the... There's like... I, I forget what their actual names are, but there's one of them that always walks east and one of them that always walks west. And one day they like meet in the middle of a desert and they're like, you move out of the way. And then they're both like, I can't move out of the way because if I move... If I si step one step to the side, then I'll be going north or south for a step. And they're like, neither of them are willing to do that. So they literally just stand there forever. And like the like the entire world just like builds like a civilization around them. Well, they just stand there snobbly staring at each other for the for the rest of all eternity. It's kind of like an existential crisis as far as Dr. Seuss stories go. North and south going Gax. I think I, I must have got the directions confused, but uh, but the but the gist is the same. It's the Zex. It's the Zax. Yo, they're just like me, for real. The Zax. How many resets are we even up to right now? I've been I've been losing track, dude. I was singing the 12 Days of Christmas and getting all confused. Now I'm talking about the Zax. I think we're on like four resets, I want to say. Waiting on Godot Core. Is Godot Core an update to Godot? Ooh. Tempting. Oh. I was literally looking at chat and I was about to staircase past this floor. That would have been highly embarrassing. Still waiting on that, that miracle double treasure room. We got quite a few of them during the Price of Perfection. We haven't gotten a single one yet in uh, on Fracture Farm here. That said, in the Price Perfection, we did have a lot more luck buffs going our way. We had the Special Charm, we had, um, we had Ginger Ale. Had Lucky Lunch every single time. So it's to be expected a little bit, but hopefully one day. Skull Cavern Treasure Rooms dive. Scratch the same itch. 
as videos that unbox a bunch of random things. <laughs> it's kind of true, yeah. Even if they're not things that we ever end up keeping, it's it's like it's like the eternal loot box. There is something just mesmerizing about watching this. Like I'm the one doing it, and I'm still me kind of mesmerized just like watching the process. It's very hypnotic in a way. Just waiting for that next treasure room, and then you get there, and you're like, oh, and then you get something, and you're like, ah, that's that thing. And you're like, that's cool. And then you move on to the next one, and the cycle just repeats ad, ad infinitum. Case in point. I thought that was Iridium for a second, and I was about to be completely bamboozled. It is technically a path to Iridium, but not a path that I'm willing to invest that much time into right now. Dino Egg? They might be dinos. The surprise inside effect. I think it gets combined also with a little bit with like the subway surfers effect. Where like, like won't like some people like put subway surfers on on the side of like a boring video and then it'll keep people's attention more. I don't even know what subway surfers is. I just hear about that all the time. I think it's like a video game. It's like an auto runner or something. They are guaranteed to be at least two Iridium bars. So next time we get Iridium, we should be, uh, we should have it on lock. Also, blue cowboy hat. I'm getting so desensitized to them. Sal did that with Junimo Kart one time. That's pretty good. <laughs> that's, that's, that's clever. I like that. Subway Surfers is the reason you don't watch YouTube Shorts. You just gotta find the right YouTube Shorts. Like, I don't make a habit of watching YouTube Shorts myself either. Um, but I don't... Uh, but I don't necessarily dislike YouTube Shorts. I think there's there are some there are good ones and there are bad ones. Just like any form any form of media. Any form of media is what I was trying to say there. I'm gonna call this five resets. Embarrassed to admit that you're a YouTube Shorts girl. Don't don't be embarrassed. Be proud. YouTube Shorts are are the way of the future. It it seems to be. I don't know if I'm ever gonna be making YouTube Shorts, but um. But it seems to be the hot trend right now. It seems to be a good way to to grow your channel. I just don't have ideas for YouTube Shorts. Anything that I ever, any ideas that I have, turn into they just end up bloating out into like an hour long video, <laughs> an hour plus long video, and it's, I'm, I'm just like I can't condense this into a YouTube Short. What are you What are you talking about? Yeah, YouTube's definitely promoting shorts more. I see I see it more on my feed than uh than I used to. There's no doubt about that. Which I think is why like like it's like a it's like a an Ouroboros of content. YouTube goes YouTube algorithm goes really hard promoting shorts, so people are more inclined to make shorts to get caught by the algorithm. And the algorithm sees, oh, people are making more shorts. We need to we need to promote these shorts more. And the cycle just goes on forever like that. Or at least until the next big trend comes along. Ooh. Nice early treasure room. You love to see it. YouTube shorts experience is much worse than TikTok in your experience. You get a lot of just filler content more so than you did on TikTok. I can't speak to anything because I never interfaced with TikTok. But I definitely see the appeal of, like, shorts and TikToks and all that stuff, because, like, obviously it's just, like, it's nice to have a little bite-sized piece of content sometimes. And like I said, you just gotta find the right shorts for you, I would think. Like, you're shopping at an Albuquerque at Finch. You gotta, you gotta find the right shorts for you. Like, for me... Some of my favorite shorts. I like uh, I like Salmence's shorts and Wickedy shorts and uh, and Shawnee's shorts. I like I like all the Stardew shorts that I that I see in my feed from time to time. They're good. I like Vsauce's shorts. I like Pan and Koic's shorts on on Super Mario sixty four. Like any any like 
like informative, like knowledgeable shorts like that, like edu edutainment based shorts are my uh, are my jam for sure. You like Old Navy shorts? I haven't thought about Old Navy in, in a dog's age. In like Tim Beeb's age, and he's, a, he's an old dog. Did anyone else hear me say Albuquerque and Finch? What is it? It's Albuquerque and something. Is, is it Albuquerque and... <laughs> what is it? It's Albuquerque and something. Why can't I think of it? Why can't I think of it? Hold on, I'm just, I'm just stretching. Abercrombie and Finch? Oh, that makes a lot more sense. You can't blame me for that one, chat. You can't blame... Yes! Oh, see? I was right. The game's rewarding me. Iridium bar times two, baby. Lock that one in. <laughs> Thank you, Albuquerque. This these iridium bars go out to Albuquerque, and it's uh, and it's and it's wonderful people. This one's for you, Walter White. We got a seed maker too. We did get a seed maker. Yeah, you're not wrong. Seed maker, couple things to sell here and there. I'm I'll take it. I'll lock that in. I don't know how uh, how much use this seed maker is gonna get any time in the near future, but. It's here. It's here to stay. Merry Christmas, everyone. All right. Well, that that locks it in. That's that's the last material we need, or not the last. Uh, that's the last iridium we need for Ginger Island. So literally, all we need now is to get our hardwood. We got all the battery packs. We got all the iridium. We need to finish up what we're doing with the community center. Do you think we're gonna get to year seven first and get and like get our Junimo hut, or do you think we're gonna get our hardwood first? I honestly don't know. I don't know if I could tell you. All right, seed maker. Um, right there, right there. I don't know why. It just feels right. I gotta go grab my watering can. Get all my tools in in order. Actually, before I do that, let me just go ahead and deposit some of this in here. I can also drop off my staircases. We're not going to be going back to Skull Cavern for a considerable amount of time, probably. So, hope you enjoyed it while it lasted. Maybe maybe we'll make some return trips to Skull Cavern in, at some point throughout the grind. Who knows? Of course, that said, I should also probably um, pivot my Crystallariums to something other than Jade in order to, to get more value out of them that way. Crack the magma geodes for iridium. We don't need no more iridium, at least not for now. <laughs> there will come a time, that's for sure. We'll probably be back to Skull Cavern specifically for that reason in the in in the future, I would imagine. But today is not that day. Cherry in the keg. You're right. There ain't no cherry wine going. Good catch, thank you. I have not watered the star fruit yet. That's what I'm about to go do. Go take care of that. Tomorrow's debris day. Looking pretty good. Looking pretty snazzy. So I should probably just put diamond. Just just load my, load up my crystallariums with diamonds now, right? Might as well just get get some residual money that way. Like we'll be getting money from diamonds. We'll be getting them from from coops and barns. Oh my! We're, we're gonna be we're gonna be having more money than we know what to do with in the near future. I think. Oh hello. New phone. Who dis? Hey Beatrix. I just wanted to check up on you and see if Fractured Farm is doing well. How's everything going? He's putting me on the spot. Oh no! They don't normally ask me to answer. Good, I feel really at home here. The farm is very productive. Not so good, or I know your secret, Lewis. Uh I don't know his secret, Lewis. I've never I've never met this man before. <laughs> I mean, that would be very ominous. 
having talked to Lewis, like, I talk to him, like, at the, at the Luau every year. I talk to him, like, once, maybe twice a year. Never see him again between that, and I just, I just say, I know your secret. Dot, dot, dot. I know your secret. The farm is very productive, though. Thank you for asking. Good to hear. Your farm has really boosted the local economy. That's a, that's news to me. <laughs> we all appreciate your hard work. Nobody tell them. I think it's safe to say that your grandfather would be really proud of what you accomplished. I, I certainly hope so. I have befriended one person and built a magical teleportation device. I think, I think I'd be proud of me, too, if I were my own grandfather. I'm my own grandpa. Are we good? Uh, I gotta swap out the crystallariums. Which of his secrets? I don't know. We'll have another opportunity, chat. We'll have another opportunity. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, I think we swap out our crystallariums now. Boop, 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 boop. That feels right. We can always pivot if we if we want to to something else, like aquamarines for some cloth at some point. Although I don't have any aquamarines. Anyway, check that one off the list. Skull Cavern is is finished for now. All right, let's go ahead and lock that son of a gun in. Oh yeah. Call me Ron Stoppable. I'm saying boo yeah. Missed the Iridium getting lunch. I'm sorry, Pelinar. You never know when it's going to drop. It's the nature of the caverns. The spreading weeds have caused damage to your farm. Not on my watch, they haven't. Also, like, good. That's kind of the plan, is the spreading weeds are supposed to cause damage to the farm. Wait, they might have destroyed one... Did They didn't destroy my, my stone cairns, did they? I'm gonna fight whatever weed dared touch any of my stone cairns. I gotta go check, chat. I gotta go check right now. One, two, three, four. Four stone cairns. One, two, three, four. Okay, we're good. We're good. Crisis averted. We're fine. The stone cairns are safe. They shouldn't be able to sp spread onto the stone cairns anyway because it's, um... Because they're protected by grass. That's the that's the whole idea of having the tall grass to begin with. What the heck was that? Oh, that's my that's the stone owl. You're doing great. You're doing great, my little friend, my little stone owl friend. Thank you for protecting those trees so prodigiously. Stone Karen. <laughs> Pour one out for the, all the people named Karen who are just lovely people. Who are, like, actually just, like, really nice people. Nice and genuine and heartfelt people. They don't deserve the... the besmirching. That the Karen stereotype has given them. You have a cousin named Karen? Are they a great person? Or do they constantly ask for the manager? There's also, I mean, there's, you know, I mean, that's the, that's the trope. But there are situations where it's okay to ask for the manager. They're just, like, extremely rare. They're, they're a lot rarer than, than most Karens would have you believe. How's our star drops doing? Or star, or star fruit? We're not growing star drops? That would be great if we could, but... You don't know both a lovely Karen and a Karen Karen? I think I actually do too. Or at least I, I don't know if I I don't really know them, but I am I am aware of them. In my uh in my personal life. In high school your mom's friend name was Karen, but she's super nice. Karen I mean it's just a nice name. I like the name Karen. But nowadays, like naming your child Karen, in the, in the in this mod age of the modern internet, it's uh, it's setting them up for failure. I 
I don't know if this is just like anecdotal evidence or if I'm, you know, trying to psych myself out a little bit. I definitely feel like there are a lot fewer stones than there used to be. Just like, it's just a kind of like a gut feeling as I navigate the fields here. I feel like I'm getting blocked by, by fewer and fewer stones. What do you guys think? Obviously, it's harder to tell when you're not actually the one playing. Like, I feel like the, the feeling I get is, is... I don't know. It definitely seems that way. We have a screenshot record. We, we can check the screenshot record for sure and see. We'll give it to like the end of summer here and then we'll see how it feels. Or see how, see how it looks. I'll, I'm willing to go over the screenshots. We haven't been over them in a hot minute actually, so. Karen doesn't feel like a kid's name to me. You know, you know what? I don't know why that particular chat message sparked this in my brain, but I'm going to go get Gertrude. Probably because Gertrude also does not feel like a kid's name, so. <laughs> let's go, let's go bring Gertrude home. And we had some uh, bunny emojis for Gertrude. She's finally coming home. I didn't mean to hit her with an axe. That was a little aggressive, but it's okay. She's, she's made of sterner stuff. Also, hello. Wait. It's your birthday! It's your birthday! I knew there was a reason I was coming out here. Oh, jeez. We gotta go get her, uh, we gotta go get her a present. I can't, I can't show up empty-handed like this. What the heck? Little bunny emojis. This is, this, it's all kinds of exciting right now. This is all kinds of exciting. Alright, I need to, I need to figure out a gift and fast. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to the dwarf. We can get her an iridium bar. <laughs> an omni geode. Go with it. Your best friend's name is Carol, and she says she's never met another Carol under 50 years old. The only Carol I know is also like over 60. It's not it's not a name I I see often in in the younger demographic. There we go. Get some homies in chat. A birthday gift? That's very kind of you. I love it. Homie! Thank you, my homie. I'll be back to buy some of these bombs at some point in the future. Don't you worry about that. Save some for me. You know a Carol that's 19? Maybe Carol's gonna start coming back. Who knows? I mean, that is a thing. Names go through, like, uh, trends all the time. Like, I don't know what the most popular baby name was, like, last year, as far as, like, uh... As far as, like, in the in the U.S. or, or around the world in, as a whole, I suppose. Alright. Here you go. It's It's perfect. She's finally home. She's home, chat. We brought her home. Quick auto grabber check as well. Holy moly! <laughs> oh my goodness, this thing's getting kind of full. This thing's getting a little bit full, if I do say so myself. Do we have a? Do we have two void chickens? We do have two void chickens. Yeah, that's right. We have arsenic and samarium. What did we get from the cavern? We got the final two iridium bars we needed. Believe it or not. check here. We don't have any large milk yet. We're waiting on... because That's what we need, right? To finish off the animal bundle. We've got the large eggs. We've got the duck egg. We've got the wool. So we need either a large goat milk or a large milk, and then we can go and finish off that bundle. Get ourselves a cheese press. And it'll be a happy day. That can't be too far off now. Guess I should go cook more often. Who knows? Who knows what brought us the luck? It could be any combination of factors. I'm personally putting my money on the star shards. They've proven pretty nice, pretty fruitful so far. All right. Lock it in. Ah, uh, sorry to hear that, purple. Hope it doesn't last too long for you. Hope you're, Hopefully your the rest of your day goes well.
Liam and Olivia were apparently the top in the U.S. last year. No, chat, I'm a normie. Olivia is like one of my favorite names. That's like what I would probably like. It's like definitely a, a top tier consideration for like what I would want to name my daughter if I ever had one. But now I can't. I gotta be a. I gotta go for a hipster take. I can't be. I can't be normie. I can't be a normie like that. I gotta name my my daughter like Banana or something. By the way, <laughs> casual '86 farming experience. <laughs> Don't mind me. Oh, one of the, one of the star fruit is also that's gonna kind of bother me if that if these star fruit don't stack. I think I'm actually gonna reset the day. Believe it or not. I'm going to reset the day to try and get a worse quality star fruit. I mean, it'll be the same quality this day, but I can I can harvest it tomorrow instead. Olivia's been in the top for like 10 years. Why did nobody tell me? No! It's all right. I'll look more into that stuff if I ever actually have a have a child. All right. So this first one was not silver quality. And I'll just I'll just water you just for funsies. All right, forty three farming experience. Farming is the only skill that has not been touched up until this point, and we're just like eviscerating it now. We're 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 giving very little leeway for the future of farming. But it's to save us two years of having to sleep to get to more luau's. I think it's honestly pretty worth it. Especially because once we have the Junimo huts, we've uh, since we've got the auto grabbers, we'll have the Junimo hut. There's very little reason that we'll ever need to actually get farming experience for anything, other than to actually level up in farming. Partner had abysmal cramps. Turns out she had bad endometriosis. And End endometriosis. Took her uterus out and was laying there for two days after surgery, going, it hurts so much less. Oh my gosh, Cass. Well, I'm glad she I'm glad she got that one figured out at the very least. That's good to hear. Alright. Second time's the charm now. Let's go get ourselves just a normal quality star fruit. I just need a normal, just a little normie star fruit. Perfect. An extremely juicy fruit that grows in hot, humid weather. Also, Good job, you can come home. How many crows did you stop? I haven't found any crows yet. Those to be expected, but also good to know. Gotta be on the lookout for those trees. For darn sure. assumed you had higher quality that higher quality crops would grant more XP. That's something I thought when I was originally doing the no level up challenge, but uh, as I discovered in that challenge, it is not the case. All, all quality crops will give the same XP. It only depends on the actual crop itself. Not the same for fish, though. Higher quality fish do give more XP, so it's, uh, it's an understandable mistake, I would think. All right. Well, I think we're officially in sleeping hours, chat. I think we're officially in, like, basically full-time sleeping hours for now. We've grown the star fruit. We've, we've, ba we've basically set everything up. All I have to do now is, like, go out, get a screenshot every day, make sure that the animals have enough time to, to eat some grass outside, head on back home. Not quite the sleep cycle that, uh that Chloe pioneered, but pretty close. The spreading weeds have caused damage to my farm. Yeah, what else is new? You know what? I'm going to hold on to the diamonds. No, I'm not going to hold on to the diamonds. I was, I was going to say I would like to see them build up in my inventory, but I don't need to see them build up. I actually don't need to go out too much there because they're going to stay in, the farm, in their uh, buildings anyway. Thank you for the sleepy emojis. Perfect timing. There are fewer and fewer babies given the top names every year. That's how the top names change. As people get tired of them.
One thing I wonder is, should I go out to the Dance of the Moonlight Jellies tomorrow? It'll, I'll have, I'd have to wait until 10 p.m. in order to do so. But getting that seafoam pudding, I've I've stopped it every year so far. Or I think I think I missed it the first year. Where do I keep the seafoam pudding? Yeah, I've got two seafoam puddings so far. Having these could be extremely helpful for the future. What do you guys think? Thumbs up if we should go to the Dance of the Moonlight Jellies. Thumbs down if no. The seafoam pudding is very nice, but it's not technically mission. It's mission critical for certain legendary fish. But I don't think we'll... I think we're already covered on that front. Yeah, for more pudding. Plus, we got to see our, our rare, rare moonlight jelly. Chat, you can you can choose to believe me or not, but uh, the last dance of the moonlight jellies we went to, I did it uh, I did it off screen between streams because I was like geo farming or whatever, and uh, I didn't see the rare moonlight jelly that time. It was the one time I did not uh, I did not encounter the rare green moonlight jelly. Turns out it was streamer luck all along. And some, some, it's, you know, an even keel of thumbs ups and thumbs downs. Video proof. Uh, video got corrupted. Sorry. There's that, there's the, most of the rest of it's fine. You can see all the boring parts where I'm just like geode farming. But, uh, the actual part where I didn't see the Moonlay Jelly is, a uh, lost to the sands of time. I'm sorry. I got so, I got so excited to not see it, hilariously enough. That I, uh, I bumped my computer and, and broke it for a second. Sorry, it's just the way it goes. Wow, I believe you. Well, thank you. Yo, the farm animals, they're migrating up north. Look at them go. I do think we should. I think we should go to the Dance of the Moonlight Jellies. It'll take a little bit of waiting, but it could pay off pretty big dividends in the future if we really need that seafoam pudding. We're going to be glad that we did it. It's an investment of what, like like 12 minutes or something like that? 10 to 12 minutes to get through the full day? Or to get towards like 10 p.m.? That's not that bad. Let's just take the time to like enjoy. Just like enjoy the atmosphere of the town. And how far we've come so far. Sell the retaining soil, sell the oyster. You know what I can do today? I might as well... Should we Should we sell the the animal produce that we've gathered so far? Legacy trash run? I can do that. Like, I should definitely save some of the animal produce, but I can, I can sell some of it for sure. Why don't I clear out my inventory and go, go pick some of it up? We'll do, we'll do a couple of runs of that. Do I sell it to Pierre or do I sell it to? Oh, they're right. You're, they probably won't be open on festival days, huh? They're, they're just like not open period on festival days. I'll go check. I'll go check the stores. See if they're open. I could literally call her and check if she's open, but. Moonlight Jellies is a special case. Yeah, it wouldn't make too much sense for them to be closed if it's literally just like the night a nighttime festival like that. So let's uh let's have a look here. Okay, so she's still open. She and she's the one I sell my animal stuff to. I guess I've just never sold animal products directly to a shop. I always just assumed it was gonna be Pierre, but it makes it makes sense for it to be Marnie. Seventy-six out of two hundred and forty. Starting to starting to burn through that hay a little bit faster. Definitely a little bit faster. I might need to to buy some at Marnie's to even top it up. But towards the end of fall, we'll be able to stock up on a lot of hay. 
You can sell it to Pierre too. Oh, well, you know what? We can do a little experimentation. We got time today. We definitely have time. Let's go ahead and deposit all the things we don't need. Which is basically everything. Might as well just deposit all these goodies. Clear up as much space as we can to take them in, because we got we got a lot of animal products we can haul in. We'll start down at the coop, why not? Pierre buys eggs and milk, not sure about wool, feather, etc. I know I said I was going to start at the coop, but I might as well start here because it's closer. Alright. Ooh, we got the large milk too! Chat, we can go complete uh, We can go complete the animal bundle. Large milk? Um, I should save some of this milk for sure. For like cooking and stuff? Let's see. Let's just bring, I mean, let's, let's, let's bring it all. Bring the large goat milk as well, why not? Bring these higher quality ones. Just bring all the higher quality stuff, honestly. Uh, I'm going to save some room just to get the eggs here. Save one for shipping too. I mean, I, I definitely will get more, obviously. But what if I want to do like a lot of cooking with milk? So a lot, a lot of milk and egg cooking. All right, we're gonna go ahead and take this and this, and what else do I need? So we got, we got wool, and I'll take just the regular wool to for for donation purposes. Wool, dude, dude. Uh, what else was for the for the animal bundle? I'm so confused. Hold on a second. Large eggs. A duck egg! I need a duck egg. I mean, I don't need a duck egg. I could technically do it without one, but we'll take the duck egg anyway. Works for me. Let's go make those Junimos happy. Actually, I should... Uh, You know what? I can do it. I can I can do it this way. I was going to say I should go, clear, go sell it before I go to the community center. That way I clear up some inventory space. But I don't technically have to. If I do this right. Once the animals are happy, I'll never see small ones again. You'll never see a small egg again. Well, I guess, yeah, we just make the animals unhappy then. I guess that, that's, it's, it's, it's a cruel way to go about it, but it is a way we could do it. Either way. Been a long time since we've been back here, and it's one of the few times that we're going to be back here. Animal bundle. Bop. 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 I'm just doing, I'm doing it the slow way to be dramatic. And finally, one little piece of fluffy wool. Give me that cheese press. That's what we're here for. Ooh, yeah, baby. That's what I'm waiting for. That's what it's all about. The cheese press has arrived. Now, chat, I know, I know I could just sell all this milk directly, but I've got a cheese press now, so technically the most profitable way is to wait and turn all this cheese, all this milk into cheese, one at a time, because I can only do it one at a time, right? So... He does take all this stuff. Okay, that's good. I don't know what, I don't know what else he takes, but... Technically, yes. Ain't nobody got time for that, though. Let's just sell it all, right? We just sell it all. Yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> that was pretty good. Hey, that's pretty good. Do we have a mayo machine, and can we get one? We can't get one until we can until we craft one ourselves. That's one of the few artisan machines that there's simply no other way to get. Cheese Empire. I'm going to do what I always do. I'm going to put the cheese press in the actual barn. It just makes the most sense. Hashtag 
have it right here ready to go get your get your b get your b emojis in by the way get your b emojis the song does not last that long i'm saving all that milk and i don't care who knows the bees are dancing to the beautiful sound of our profits we're making so much money, chat. I didn't realize how much bank we'd make after these auto grabbers rolled in. We have officially entered the uh, the industrial revolution. We're in it to win it now. All right. Should I keep the rabbit's feet for like gifting down the line, or does it does it not matter too much? All right. We're gonna get rid of all. I'll keep. I'll leave like the basic quality ones here. Keep the rabbit's feet for gifting, don't sell them? Okay. Every time I hear this song, I yearn more and more for a bee house. Not that bee houses are all that great, but I, I kind of need them in my life. Alright. And sell, 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 sell. Holy moly. Um, I'm gonna buy more hay. I don't know how much hay I need. I'm just gonna buy like a bunch. 405 hay. Why not? <laughs> Was that superfluous? Probably. Will we go through it? Absolutely. We got enough for almost another full silo right there. Or actually a little bit more than another full silo. I'll probably grab one of the chests and bring it down next to that silo. That way we can uh, just keep it all together in one place there. Void eggs. I don't know if there's a reason to keep just the basic quality void eggs, but I'm, I'm going to keep them. Uh, duck feathers. Are these are these worth selling? Quality duck feathers for Leo. I'm going to sell these for now. We'll hold on to just some basic ones. We'll hold on to all the rabbit's feet and sell all the wool. You can restock the silo from inside the barn, but I was walking past the silo anyway. Oh, but maybe put the chest inside the barn so that I, oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, Penny does not like a rabbit's feet. It's a hated gift. What the heck? Marnie, why do you do this? Why, why are you like this, Marnie? <laughs> I'm not going to be able to make it to Pierre's in time. No! Wait, maybe? There's still a chance. There's a chance? Come on. Oh, God. Please. Please. I think I'm going to make it. Chad, I'm going to make it. 450? 450? Please still be at the counter, sir. Just stay at the counter. Stay at the counter for, like, a moment longer. Okay. We made it. Sell it, sell it, sell it. Just, se just sell it all. Get it out of here. Oh, baby. 160,000, basically. And then he just left. You can't put stuff in the auto grabber. You can if there's already things in there, right? Like if I just take this uh, this hay, I can just go put it in the auto grabber because there's already eggs still left in there. I believe that's the case. So maybe we don't need the chest at all. Um, that said, I will come to, to this chest to grab all my little goodies back here. Get myself situated the way I like it. Something like that. That's fine. Marnie knows to have work-life boundaries. Alright. I can, I can stand that. I can, I can appreciate that. But when I needed her most, she was not there, and that's I'll, that's something I, I can't forgive. You know, I can forgive it, but I won't forget it. Auto grabber, in goes the hay. Community center thing just popped up. <laughs> oh, oh no, it's it's always there. It's just okay. Yeah, the hay is just uh, a thing that you can actually use at the community center. Right, right, right. All right. I got a little more time. I'm gonna go. I did. I did notice there was a significant amount of debris near the community center. We might as well go clean that up while we've got a little extra time before the festival here. 
and uh, take care of business that way. Pierre just cancels his only day off when the competition is out of the picture, which is interesting. Can you shop at Pierre's on Wednesdays if you, um, even, like, even if you went Jojo route? Because obviously if you go Jojo route, then Pierre will stay closed on Wednesdays. But can you, can you shop there on Wednesdays if you have the key to the town? Presumably you can go into Pierre's, but will he actually be at the counter or not? Because I don't know. I don't think Pierre normally leaves his house on Wednesdays at all, does he? That could be one of those. That could that could be a neat piece of starter trivia on its own. Ever everyone all everyone's sleeping on the key to the town. What can I say? It's uh it's an easily forgettable item. Just like PJR is an easily forgettable song. Just kidding. I know you guys would never forget PJR. It's burned into your memories forever now. We're all gonna be at some at some point. Hopefully in the far, far future for most of us. L lying in our bed. Waiting for the... Waiting for... Our final day to be snuffed out. And we're just gonna be humming. And it'll bring us... It'll bring us joy in our final moments. At least it will for me. Jojo Rout isn't hugely popular. That's also true, yeah. That is very true. 1.5.2. Fixed bug preventing the key from working at Pierre's General Store on Wednesdays if the player went the Jojo Rout. So now you can at least get into Pierre's, but whether, whether or not you can actually sell anything at Pierre's, it's unclear. Alright. Good intel, good wiki diving. Thank you for that. Do your friendship early, mate. So your main concern when reaching the chi room is remembering Leo's schedule. <laughs> yeah, Leo. Leo throws everything for a loop. He won't for us, thankfully, because we're gonna be on Ginger Island before we befriended like basically anybody other than the dwarf. So it's all gonna just uh, it's all gonna work out together. All right. Thank you for the sea foam pudding, sir. Five thousand. It's such a. It is it is a an exorbitant price, but I gotta pay it. Anything else I want here? Moonlight jellies banner is kind of cute. Give me the moonlight jellies banner. I just want I just want one. No, give me two so I can maybe make a little symmetry going on. Do they stack? They don't stack. Okay, that's fine. All right, and this is the one time where we make an exception and do the in-game music, because obviously. I mean, it goes without saying. Some of the best music in the game right here. So, let me just pause this. And let's enjoy... ...this together. Oh. Wait, he didn't say he's not sending the boat off! I, I, got, I, was getting, I was leaning back in my chair and everything. I was getting ready to go. All right, here we go. Now I can lean back and just take a moment of reprieve at the end of a long and productive summer. We did a lot. We did a lot these past two seasons, honestly. And we got a long way ahead of us yet. Mostly just, just sleeping the days away, waiting on those Junimos to eventually grace our, grace our farm with their presence. Exclamation point jelly. Estimation point jelly. It is on, it is on a one minute cooldown, but uh, someone someone's gonna get it here. We'll see. Will it line up nicely? Artemis saw a moonlight jelly. Maybe we'll get one more moonlight jelly for before because uh, it might be a thirty second cooldown. I don't remember. The baby moonlight jellies. Look at them. Honestly, I think this might be a hot take. Baby moonlight jellies better than rare green moonlight jelly. Don't tell the rare green moonlight jelly that I said. Oh, jeez. This is awkward. Oh, no. 
I, I, I look rare green moonlight jelly. It's not that I like the babies more than you. It's just that you you're supposed to be rare. It's literally in your name, the rare green moonlight jelly. And I see you every time. I see you almost every time except for last year. I don't I don't know what to tell you, my friend. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> it's right behind me, isn't it? Beautiful. It likes you. I mean, it must keep, it must, I guess, it must uh, have some sort of kinship with Beatrix and Chloe. Keeps coming back. All right. Music back down. And brace yourselves. I think this is kind of an intense song we're jumping back into. Oh, we're at, uh, we're at a, a peaceful moment in the intense song, though. Okay, so it's fine. Rare green jelly has a bone to pick with you. Heard me? You what, mate? All right, where are we putting our Moonlight Jelly banners? Moonlight Jellies. What if we do a little redecorating here? I'm going to put it here. Oh, I can't put it there for right now. Hold on, put it here for right now. Actually, I kind of like that. I kind of like that, just having it on like the peripheries of the room. That's kind of nice. It looks like we got a little jelly in our aquarium there. That's kind of, that's a neat little decoration hack. I'll take it. Have a good one there, Mabby. Thanks for hanging out. Alright. Just eight wood in my inventory. Also don't need to worry about that. Put that away. And we're off to bed. Into fall we go. Pretty sure MX Jelly has absolutely no bones to pick with anyone. <laughs> Touche. That's, that's a valid point. Dude, I have so much combat experience. 28 combat experience. It all it, it flabbergasts me every time I see that, that long magenta bar. Alright. I do want to check this. I want to check and look and see where our... Um, how do I have all these pictures? What the heck is this? I want to, I want to see how our farm debris situation has progressed over this past uh, past year so far these past couple seasons. We're going to go to I'm just going to go to the start of the start of year 4. Let's have a look here. Let's see the progress together. Check and look and see. It's it's a very important uh, thing to me. So this was how it looked at the start of year four. There's def chat. Just looking at it right now, I can tell you there's definitely more stones on this farm than there were on than than there are now. Like, look at this. This is all stone. This is literally all stone. Let's let's see how this progresses though. One day at a time. There was the there was the barn upgrade. I saw that. Chat. Are the stones going away? Are the stones going? Are the stones disappearing? I think the stones are vanishing. Look, there's so, there's way fewer stones already. It's they're going away like one at a time, but they're vanishing. Chat, we're winning. We're winning in the fight against stones. Look at how few stones there are. This is and this is today. Am I crazy? That's so that's so many fewer stones. And look and look at our mahogany trees. They're coming in clutch. The stones in the section you were looking at were growing. Was it this section down here? That's the that's the one part that we haven't uh, we haven't wrapped around with grass. But I feel like I feel like this is pretty good, chat. Can we compare the first and last pictures? Uh, not easily, I don't think. Maybe I can try and set that up for a second here. Let me see. Let me go. Where's the start of year four? Year four. Let me copy this and put it in a in a better spot. I go over here. And then copy today's. Put that over here so we can compare them nicely. Alright, let's give this a try. So this was the start of year four. And this is where we're at now. Start. Now. 
I think it's I think it's I think there's there's significantly fewer stones, chat. Over here, I see what you mean in the bottom, in like in the, that's the little southwest portion. There's there's more. Look, it's it, the, the stones are more densely packed right there because they got nowhere else to go. But like it throughout the middle here, in between, like weaving between the trees, you can't tell me that there aren't fewer stones. And like, look down here, look down here, boom, we got rid of like at least like like five stones there. It's night and day. It really is. One day, maybe we might not even have to mine, and one day we just won't have any stones on our farm. Could you imagine? Such a beautiful horizon in our future. I dreamed a dream. All right, today is debris day, so I got to make sure to take care of business there. What debris I can get rid of at the very least. Uh, we'll, I'll, t I'll take a sacrifice there to, to get that. Grass and sticks. Grass and sticks. We got rocks and trees and trees and rocks and rocks and trees and trees and rocks. We got rocks and trees and trees and rocks. That was a... <laughs> that that goat was not very happy with my singing. That, that was a that was a low-pitched bleat. Did you hear that? Holy moly. That's like a goat saying, I haven't had my morning coffee yet. Don't talk to me. Miss the stick? I wouldn't be surprised. The sticks blend in pretty well with the uh, with the autumnal grass. Mahogany forest coming along nicely. You love to see it. I don't think I saw any like sticks or anything down here. No logs confirmed. Okay. I thought that was a cockle, but it was a void chicken. <laughs> a common mistake. Everyone's made it at least once, right? Not just me. Couldn't just be me. There's a stick right there. Oh, stick right there. Also a stump right there. I think I've hit that stump a few times, so I gotta be careful of that. Don't want to hit it too many more times and be be upset when I get a single point of forging experience more than I need to. That would just be foolish. Boy, chickens have natural camo like that. If they're on the beach farm, they very much do. You probably wouldn't make that mistake if you're just playing on the forge farm. You wouldn't download a car, would you? Chat, if there was a predictor in real life, like uh, like the predictor for Stardew Valley... Would you use it? Yes. I mean, it would be very tempting for sure. I still might hold fast though. I might I might say, you know, it's it's cheating. It's cheating myself out of the experience of, of living real life. I'll, I'll I'll pass it along to the next person. Only for some things though. How did a cockle get on my forest farm? Like, I get it. You could use a predictor and, and do some great things in real life, for sure. But you're robbing yourself of so many experiences that way. Like, you'd be like, oh, I'll use the predictor to win the lottery. Okay, but then you miss out on the experience of, like, losing the lottery every day for 40 years. And then finally winning off the back of your numbers and getting, like, like $10,000 instead of the actual jackpot. But you still get that dopamine rush. You're just, you're just going to skip all that just so you can be rich and well off for the rest of your life? What's what's even the point? What's even the point of living a life where you're 100% secure in your financial status if you can't be if you if you didn't take any risks to get there? I'm starting to I'm starting to see why you might do this actually. I'm I'm starting to talk myself into it. But I got to commit to the bit. All right. Go to sleep for the night. We're good. We're good. Argon lost the lottery recently. I'm not talking about myself. I'm not 40 years old. You do it in a heartbeat. 
But what if it was like this? What if it was uh? What if there was a predictor, but you could only predict like the stuff that you would dig up from the ground, like in Stardew. Like you just have like X-ray eyes. You could like look around and see if there's like clay hidden under the ground or something. It would be a lot less useful than in real life, probably. But I'd probably still take it at that point. I'd be like, you know, I'd, I'd be more inclined to take it. I'd be like, you know, it seems less useful, but also just like a cool ability. There's no, there'd be no reason not to take it at that point. It's all upside. Are we good? We're good. I need to. I need to stop questioning myself. There's literally like nothing that I do every day. <laughs> When do you have to start sleeping to year seven? This is it. We're sleeping to year seven right now. I do go outside every day to get my daily farm photo, as well as to give the uh, animals time to eat their their nom noms, their yummy hay, or their uh, well, not the hay, but they have to go outside to eat the grass, but only on non rainy days. So I go outside, I go and I water my cat, get a little water for pie, and then we go back and we go back to sleep. So th this is this is sleeping to year seven. This is the fastest we can do it unless we decide to move the bed into the into the dining area. But what do you take me for? I'm a pragmatist. I'm not a, a heathen. Sleep stream. Welcome on in, Wickety. You're here just in time for our sleep stream. We've we've done everything else we can do. We've got our auto grabbers. We've got our iridium. You got the two star fruit that we're able to grow on our own. It's all sleepy time. How'd your stream go, by the way? Uh-oh. <laughs> There's no getting rid of this debris. There ain't no getting rid of this debris anytime soon. Oh boy. How much how much experience do you get for mining a meteor? I'm gonna say the meteor probably landed somewhere over over on this side of the farm. I could check the screenshot. There's no doubt about that. But I mean, it's a big purple meteor. How hard could it be to find? What if it hit the forest? Don't even say it. Don't even don't even put that evil out there in the world. There's no way, right? Got to use the bonus die a few times, and your duck gave you a feather first try. That's actually like a, an extremely pog moment. That is that is huge. There it is, right next right next to Hootie and the chicken. Hootie the chicken and their third wheel the meteor, <laughs> the iridium meteor. Glad you got you got to use your bonus die though, Wickedy. Sounds like a fun little stream. Popular corner. I'm, I'm just glad all of this is safe. Feels so abnormal, but also so right to have all these animals just roaming my farm now. It's, it's starting to feel like this is the way it was always meant to be. Beatrix was made to be a rancher. I'm start. I'm starting to discover her personality. For a long time, Beatrix has been a bit of a blank slate. I'm start. I think we're starting to, as we get a little bit further in the challenge, we're starting to unearth her, her more distinct personality traits here. She does love her cherry wine, though. Gotta give her that. Gotta give her that. We did finish the animal bundle, actually. That's one of the things we did uh, not too long ago. Next big objective is... Um, depending on what comes first, either we bomb our mahogany forest for hardwood, or we build a Junimo hut in year 7. Those are, the, those are the next milestones we're looking forward to. So buckle on up, folks. <laughs> We're going for a ride. There might be some other stuff that I could partake in. There's, prob there's probably some side diversions I could do. But if we're trying to get to year seven, I feel like the fewer diversions, the better, right? stepfather has degrees in both archaeology and geology, so a what's in the ground predictor would be hilarious for him. He's he's the one who could get the most use out of it, that's for sure. 
What's left for the community center? When do we switch to Joja? So the community center, we finish the animal animal bundle. We've done the crab pot bundle. To complete the trifecta, uh, oh, I skipped debris day, dude. It's okay. We we can do debris day today instead. Um, also Stardew Fair. Yeah, that's about right. Um, the only one left is the quality crops bundle for us to get the preserves jar. After that. Join us and thrive. Or join them and thrive, I suppose. It's okay, we got we got a lot of time to, to brace ourselves for that inevitable moment where we betray the Junimos in service of the blue discus of our dreams. The legendary mythical blue discus, a god amongst fish. Wiki doesn't say how much experience from meteorite must be zero then. Good to know. I will mine it at my earliest convenience. Aw, oh, gee, Willikers. Definitely would have mined that otherwise. Can I bomb the hardwood stumps to get into the grove? These stumps here, you cannot. Like these, these ones here. These are not bombable. I mean, you can bomb them. They'll just, but they'll just kind of like laugh it off. They're like an, an they're like anime protagonists. Throw a bomb at them, and they'll just do that little thing where like the, the, like zooms the camera in, so you can just see their mouth, and their the corner of their mouth tilts up in the slight sideways smirk, like, <laughs> and then they unleash like a a torrent of punches back in your face. Except in this case, they're logs, so they don't do that. They just kind of sit there growing, intimidating you. Have a good one there, Bex. Thanks for hanging out. That super meal is for you. Enjoy. Ooh, sneaky tree back here. Sneaky beaky treaky. Your video quality went way down. Yeah, how's the video quality been, by the way? Is it, has it been noticeably different from pe previous streams? If it's gone way down, you might just want to refresh. But has it been different from previous streams? Because I did change that uh, that latency option, so it might have affected the quality, but I don't know. Sardu's not that, that taxing of an experience, so it might be hard to tell. It has. May I ask again why we're sleeping till year seven? We need to get one star drop. Sorry, one star fruit. I always make I always confuse those two. One star fruit per year at the Luau. Because that's the only way we can get star fruit without farming experience. And we need nine of them to build a Junimo hut. The reason we only have to go to year seven instead of year nine is because we can farm two of them, which we already did, as you can see by our farming experience now. Uh, we can farm two of them before we reach level one, so. That is uh, where we're at. Quality is about the same. Your video quality has been awful. Thought it was your Wi-Fi. Thumbs thumbs up. If the quality is like basically the same as it is every stream, thumbs down. If it, if there has been a notable noticeable difference this stream. This is the first time I'm testing with like the ultra low latency setting, so I don't know how how intense the effect is. Most people are giving me thumbs up. Over quartz did hit me with a thumbs down, same as usual. I'm seeing lots of thumbs ups, and the thumbs ups are rolling in faster than ever because of the the low latency, the lower stream delay. So I think we're good. I'll watch the I'll watch the stream back, or I'll watch parts of it back anyway, just to, and I can compare. I know what the footage should look like more than anyone, probably, because I, I you know I deal with it a lot, so so I can definitely compare and get into the granular detail. It's actually slightly better for you. What the heck? <laughs> that's not how that's supposed to work.
<laughs> you mostly just listen so you can't tell me. Fair. Fair. Just content creator things. Rarely actually watch a video or stream. Mostly just listen while you work on other stuff. Much better video today? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Based on what I know about technology, but... If you're saying it's better video, I will, I'll trust you. I'll take your word on that one. Oh, cherry wine. Gotta keep it rolling. What if I accidentally put the star shards in the in the keg? Made some star shard wine. We can drink it and fuse ourselves with, with mineral-based luck. That's actually a good little... Uh, little cut through the debris there. That, that used to be a solid wall of stone. Spend 98% of streams listening to it like a podcast and reading chat so you don't really notice the video quality. Fair enough. VOD watchers. I'm, I'm talking to you now. Is the quality any worse for you? Leave a comment, also like and subscribe, because you can't say leave a comment without also mentioning liking and subscribing. It's in the YouTuber code. They don't let you do it. But hey, I mean, if you're enjoying the stream, please do like the stream. It does actually help, so. But if you don't like the stream, then also, you know, like, you don't have to like it, so it's all good. It's all good, man. Mentioned that debris can replace other debris. Does that happen with an unkempt farm? Uh, I'm wondering if that could happen with stone and fiber. Can one replace the other? Uh, I'd have to I'd have to talk to Blade more about it. Basically, all my knowledge of that comes from like what Blade mentioned in that in the previous stream, or all the important knowledge for for me right now. As far as I know, fiber can replace other debris, but I don't know if other debris can replace fiber. I would imagine that it probably could. I imagine that fiber is not immune to being replaced. That wouldn't make any sense, because if that were the case, then you would imagine that most of the, that if you left a farm for long enough, it would just be all fiber. Just like fiber and trees, and that would be it. But that's not really what you see if you sleep for like a hundred plus years or whatever. Oh, geez. It's, start it's starting to become inavocable down there. That's good. That's what we want. We want more hardwood trees. Yeah, fiber can definitely overtake stone. Whether stone can overtake fiber. Stone beats fiber. Fiber beats stone. And wood beats both. Fiber dies in winter. That's true, too. I never thought about that. Fiber does die out in winter, so... It's not, uh... That would stop it from overtaking, like, forever. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I never would have thought that the... That the mechanics of debris spreading in Stardew Valley would not only be so pivotal and important to to a run, to like a challenge run like this, but also like so interesting to learn about. I love learning about stuff like that, like the little nitty gritty of uh, of mechanics that nobody else ever even really considers. Cause like most of the time you just clear the debris and don't think about it. It's a big part of what I love about challenge runs to be honest with you. You're autistic and you still have to check in every f every few years like yep i'm not not neurotypical yet <laughs> fair enough i'll trust your experience on that one i don't know anyone in my personal life who has autism actually no that's not true i know uh, i know one girl who does and she's she's a very lovely person i would i would never have known she was autistic if she didn't tell me it's uh i mean it's, it's a broad spectrum right so and I'm not going to speak too much on it because I don't know too much about it, but uh, 
but I mean, it's not a character defining thing, so <laughs> it's just a thing about you. You're very autistic. You're autistic too. Autistic friends rise up. I'm so glad that we're broadly as a culture past the point where we use things like like autistic and gay as like insults. What the heck was up with that? Why is that like, I mean, obviously it's not completely gone and it never probably will be. There's always going to be like horrible people out there using them like that. But like that was like, like words like that were so prevalent throughout like, I remember them in like the, because I was, I was a kid in like the early 2000s and like late 1990s. And it was, it was like, normalized so much back then it was so it's like thinking back on it it's very disquieting it's like it's it's just upsetting to think about back then like it was it was just kind of like normal at least where i was and, I, and and now i think on it and like what the heck that was like really messed up definitely a defining characteristic just not the only one fair enough you know what fair enough When you were a kid, it was way worse. I mean, with the advent of the internet, for sure, it's brought to uh, a lot more understanding and, uh, and and positivity to it. I mean, it also it also I mean the internet's a double-edged sword because it opens up avenues for people to to harass in hit ways hitherto never before seen. But it's uh, also on the on the broad scope, I'd say the internet's probably a positive thing. Might be easier to ask who's neurotypical. It seems to be the case these days. Seems more often than not, so you'll, you'll talk to someone and they'll have some, uh, some experience with some type of, uh, neurodivergency. Which is good for, like, the solidarity of, like, People, I would say. <laughs> Stardew attracts like-minded people. I mean, that's also very true. I don't know how much... Uh, I don't know how much it attracts like specific types of neuro of neurodivergent people, but I mean, obviously, it's we're all here right now, so. <laughs> If no one is neurotypical, maybe it's just not a thing that exists. That's like the whole debate around like being normal, right? Like like the word normal. The normal is maybe better used just as like a mathematical definition than to refer to like anything relating to people. Like no one can be normal because everyone's like abnormal in some way. So a, no a, a normal human being simply does not exist and I wouldn't have it any other way. Normal is too boring. It's way more fun to be, like, different. To be different and yet the same. The word normal is bad. I mean, it can be it can be used in a mathematical context. It's just it's just a word at the end of the day. And it's not it's not like a like a derogatory word. It's all just about the context that you use it in. If anyone is super, then no one is super. Exactly! Exactly! Syndrome, my favorite my favorite movie character. Not really, that's 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 a little extreme, but Syn Syndrome is pretty is is a pretty good character. Syndrome from the Incredibles. That's where that comes from, right? If everybody's super, no one will be. Chat, who's the best uh, Pixar villain? Is it Syndrome? Syn Syn there's got, there's got to be an argument to be made for Syndrome. Is, is Incredibles Pixar number one? I always get that confused. But number two, who's the best Pixar villain? Just, we just got to start. We just got to start listing them because 
there are too many Pixar movies, too many good Pixar movies that I gotta, that I would not be able to list too many off the top of my head. You don't know who the best would be? It's a hard choice to make, right? It's like trying to decide, like, who your favorite child is. It's just not fair. The Underminer. <laughs> Why be normal when you could be perpendicular? So true, bestie. We're all a little perpendicular around here. As a borderline person, my emotions are all... Almost always forms of masking. However, I do chuckle out loud during these streams. So again, thanks. Hey, no worries. Happy to help in whatever way I can, Jay. I definitely also feel a lot like my uh, like my emotions are are some semblance are like some kind of a mask. Like I don't feel them all the way, but I do feel them. I do feel them to a certain extent for sure. Just not as much as I, not nearly as much as I used to or know that I could or had the capacity for at one point, but eh, say levy. You love Pixar shorts, they get you really emotional. But yeah, I mean, the Pixar shorts, you gotta pack so much like storytelling and emotion into such like a dense package. But they do stand out in my mind too. As like uh like what's the one with like the all the like it's not really an emotional one, but there's the one with like all the birds on a line. On like a on like a telephone wire. Isn't there, there's like one about like a package trying to be delivered or something too. I don't remember. There's like there's so many out there. Pixar shorts gotta have some kind of crazy cult following out there, I would imagine. I'm just going down to check my uh to check my silo reserves, don't mind me. For the birds? Yeah, that's probably it. <laughs> it had to do with birds, so it must be for the birds, right? We're working on a dating simulator with characters of all flavors of neurodivergence. Hopefully you can portray them well. Definitely get some, like, uh... What are they called? Like, like I want to say sensitivity testers. I don't know if that's the actual term for them, but it's like a... It's, it's like people who can like test for that sort of thing because like you might like like people like that it happens all the time where like in like media someone will be they'll try to d d uh portray someone who is neurodivergent in some way or f or part of some minority group and uh they just completely mess it up not out of like malice but mo mostly out of like uh not knowing not knowing that they're saying you're doing anything wrong but uh, a sensitivity tester will definitely catch something like that so Definitely invest in that. There's a guy who plays chess with himself. OMG me. Booty! Booty the third blesses us with his presence. We gotta go bring Hootie home. I don't know where this Hootie's gonna be, but we're gonna go find him. All right. Y'all ready for another game of I Spy? Little Where's Waldo, but Where's Hootie? Let's go do it. Get some owl emojis in chat, please. Owl emojis. All right. Hoot hoot. So we know there's obviously one to Hootie right here. That's that one we know. One right down here. And one... Oh, I see it already. All right. Found it. I did it. I win, chat. It's me. I was the first to see it. Shout when you see it, though. Shout when you see it. I can't claim victory. I have I have stream delay uh, advantage. It is visible here, though. I'll tell you that. It's very it's very visible. I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint. It's on the west-hand side of the farm. Or am I just trolling you? Am I just trolling you? Left side. You see it? 
Dra Dragonic Moon. Did you see it? Left side? Somewhere, somewhere in this vicinity. Yeah, I think people are starting to see it. Hidden a little right over here. Every, everyone's just crowding around this one little corner. I appreciate it. All right, well, you know what, Hootie? If you feel like that's the place for you, I'm not going to I'm not gonna say no. I'm not going to go mess with any Hootie's vibe too much. I only moved one of the Hooties because I needed someone to protect my, my mahogany trees. But that Hootie can stay right there. I will go claim these supply crates, though. Not a lot of open ground anywhere else. Fair. Valid. That's true. Can Hootie land in the grass? Or do you think grass precludes stone owls from, uh, from making their perch? I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen a, seen one of them land in in grass, so it might uh, it might stop that. You've only seen meteors land in grass. That would be pretty weird if meteors couldn't land in grass. Could you imagine? Like, what if that's how it worked in real life? What if, like, a meteor was, came crashing down through the at, through the atmosphere, was about to make impact in a nice nice wheat field, and it just like bounced off? Like the meteor's made of freaking jello or something. What's my mini goal right now? Build a Junimo hut. That is, uh, we need to get n t nine star fruit to build a Junimo hut. Why nine star fruit, by the way? Why do you think that's the number that uh, Concerned Ape settled on? Also, I need to need to give a little bit more time, I think, just for the animals to eat. Like you would think it would be like ten star fruit. I'm glad that it's not. It saves us a whole year of having to having to sleep to get it. But nine star fruit? It's such. It's, it's OMG. He's so random. Maybe he likes perfect squares. Chat, what number is halfway between 1 and 9? This is not a trick question. Well, it's it's a little bit of a trick question, but it's not really a trick question if you know what I'm if you know where I'm getting at with this. Halfway between 1 and 9. 5, 4.5. 4.5. Five, five. Most people saying five or four point five. Four point five is incorrect because that's the that's halfway between zero and nine. Um, five is incorrect because the answer is three. Wrap your head around that one for a second, because think about it. One times three is three. Three times three is nine. So ergo, three is halfway between one and nine. It's the midpoint multiplica multiplicativity. One times, if you multiply them both by three, you get to the, you get to either endpoint, right? So one time, it's it, it makes perfect sense, chat. You just you're just thinking about it too hard. No, you can't. That's not inc incorrect. What are you talking, chat? It's not. It's I'm not the I'm not the person to pioneer this. You can take this up with Vsauce. He brought it up in a video. There's there's cultural precedence for this, believe it or not. There there really is. Can't argue with that. <laughs> I've never seen people so mad. Today on bad math with art. What do you mean bad math? <laughs> anyway, today's the last day of fall, which means we should scythe our our grass because all the grass is going to die anyway. So we should go ahead and try and get um where did I put my scythe by the way we should go ahead and try and get as much hay out of this grass as we can today stock up on stock on stock up on it quite nicely so how do we do this um we need some bombs right to like bomb the hay out of the out of the feeders 
I'm not wrong, but the assumptions that we're on a log scale is not default. <laughs> but I'm not wrong. You, I mean, you said it yourself. I'm not wrong. I didn't. I mean, I didn't ask. I you really. I guess the right answer then is: Can you please be more specific? Are we on an additive or logarithmic scale, or like an exponential or logarithmic logarithmic scale? That's that's the real correct answer. Is there's not enough there's not enough information to answer this question. All right, so actually, I guess I didn't need two bombs, but um, I'm gonna do this in the actually we'll do this in here. There's more room. So how do I do this? Cause like I can, you just bomb, right? You just bomb, just drop a little bomb, and then we can start taking all the hay out. The hopper is empty, okay. And now we can go out and scythe all the grass. Auto petter, rip. <laughs> Alright, that's a reset. The poor cows. I didn't even realize I blew up the auto petter. <laughs> that's a good catch, chat. That's a very good catch. Alright, we'll go with the cherry bomb this time. Especially because I only need one bomb. And scythe. Also need the scythe. bad <laughs> local farmer blows up his own cows it's for it's for the best i promise i've thought it through they'll be thanking me in the end these cows will be so thankful look they don't even remember it anymore only beatrix remembers these groundhogs day style resets and this time i'll be more careful i won't bomb the auto pet or i won't even bomb any of the any of the barn animals i'll be safe Slingshot and explosive ammo is very effective also. I don't think we have access to explosive ammo, but that is good to know. Either way, this cherry bomb should do the trick. Alright, we'll do it on this side instead. Can you please... Alright, perfect. Perfect. Won't hit any of them. There, it's perfect. It, it didn't hit a single one of them. They might be a slightly perturbed by the noise. Excuse me. There we go. They may be slightly perturbed by the noise, but there's nothing I can really do about that. I'm not about to go and stick wool in all of their ears. Alright, and now we scythe the day away. Scything to the rhythm of the music. It's very satisfying. Didn't even notice the auto petter. I didn't either. I'm so glad that so many people caught it, though. <laughs> After so long of letting the grass grow and prevent all the debris spreading, this is pretty satisfying. I can't even lie. <laughs> I'm a big fan of the grass and what it's been doing for us so far in this challenge, but I can't deny it is pretty annoying to walk through all the time. <laughs> Probably shouldn't get rid of the, the fiber too. Uh, I guess the fiber is going to die in, fall, in, in winter anyway as well, right? So it doesn't matter if you get rid of the fiber now. Is getting golden scythe a goal? It is. No golden scythe until we are told to do so. Is anyone else getting bothered by my inventory setup, by the way, or just me? It's kind of freaking me out. I'm not usually one to, like, just leave a tool in the middle or towards the end of, like, a, a toolbar like that. And it's kind of... It's, it's unnerving me a little bit. That season just flew by. I mean, we're we're not stopping for anything. Compared to what we've been doing, it's they it should all... They should all start flying by. Do you think we'll have enough grass to fill up the, the silo, like, twice? Or do you think we'll only be able to do do one here? And we're still going. We're still getting hay, so... No doubt about that. Oh, I thought, I thought it stopped for a second, but... 
Golden Scythe doesn't produce more hay, does it? It only makes it so your the swing of your scythe is a little bit wider. You got a wider berth for your scythe. Plan for getting star fruit is to buy one per year at the Luau for for all the remaining star fruit. We've already grown the two that we can that we're allowed to as far as um as far as our farming experience goes. All right, I think our I think our silo is full. Golden Scythe does increase the hay you get. Or does it actually, or does it only seem that way? Inventory full. What are you talking about? Does it only seem that way because you're hitting more grass per swing? Is it like a little placebo effect? Golden Scythe has a 75% chance, whereas regular Scythe only has 50. All right, fair enough. I stand corrected. I didn't think that would be the case, to be honest with you. I thought the Golden Scythe was literally just like, it does more damage, and it's, um, and has a wider swing. And also it's gold, so it's just like intrinsically better. So how fast are we going to end up going through the hay? Let's try and do a little bit of math and figure this one out. Um, Because we're going to be... We have, what? 10... 10 coop animals and 10 barn animals. Right? So that means that... So, there, so we're going through 20 hay per day. So the silo will be empty in 12 days... So, on day 12 of winter, we'll have to, like, restock the silo. And again, on, like, day 24. Does that sound about right? It's nice that we have, like, multiples of 10. That makes it very easy to work with mathematically. You wish it was iridium? <laughs> An iridium scythe, yeah, it does feel a little weird that it doesn't match the rest of your iridium tools once you get to the end, but... I'm sure Concerned Dave had his reasons. Probably just that he didn't think about it. Yeah, because they're not going to be going outside at all during the winter. They're not going to have... Even even if I were to put grass outside, they wouldn't go out to eat it, so... So they're only going to be going through hay, which means it's guaranteed to be 10 hay per day, so... So unless I'm missing something... That should be that. At some point, we should just build a second silo. I'm not opposed to that. I'll see how I feel about about it after this winter. Going through one winter with one silo, we'll see how it goes. But I mean, building multiple silos, there's only really upsides. It's not like I don't have the money or the resources to make it happen. Especially if I do more winter forage farming, which I don't know if I'm going to do. Probably not. I mean, we're going to make enough residual income just from diamonds and animal produce alone that I don't think I need to worry about it. Thirty goals left. Thirty goals left, Mary, on your on your randomizer run? Is that true? You're up to like five hundred and whatever goals already? That's insane. <laughs> I guess once you get to a certain point in the randomizer, it starts uh, it starts snowballing a little bit, right? What if your next goal is something that is a crop that can't be harvested with a Junimo hut, like a pineapple? Grill me this. Why can't I harvest the pineapple with the Junimo hut? I'm pretty sure you can. If you cannot, then that's news to me, and I'm just going to hope for the best, but... Playing on standard, I see. That'll make things go a little bit faster for sure. Still, that's quite a uh, that's quite an quite an achieve quite an achievement to make it that far. Oh, you thought they only grew on Ginger Island? I see. No, yeah, you can grow pineapples in summer on uh, on the mainland, and the Junmos can harvest them then. 
can't grow them year round like you can on Ginger Island, but thankfully we won't have to. This is very soothing. Something about, you know, clearing all this grass off. In combination with the rain, even, especially, like, rain on its own is very soothing to me, and then combine it with this very, just, uh, therapeutic activity. Good little grass-cutting ASMR session. I'm loving it. Are we coloring the Junimos with star shards? Wickedy, you read my mind. <laughs> you absolutely read my mind. Because if, if you don't know, you could in a Junimo hut, you can put any mineral in it. And it'll change the colors of the Junimos. And it, by any mineral, it means any mineral, including star shards. So I'm sure you can put two and two together. Are you guys ready for pink Junimos? Pink star sharded Junimos? I'm so excited. And I will call them lucky. Lucky little Junimos. You have Obsidian and Neptunite together? That sounds beautiful, honestly. Obsidian colored Junimos? I mean, I guess they're, they're not, like, literally the exact color of, like, the mineral that you put in. It's like each mineral is categorized into one of, like, several different colors, and then they, uh, the Junimos are colored based on that. But there's quite a few different colors, if I remember right, from, from that one short. You can do more than one. I think you can. Is that is that like color blending? Purple and black? I love that. Purple and black Junimos. It's very on brand for you as well, Wikidi. Very much matches your brand. If I were to try and match my brand, I guess I would just go with green Junimos, which is, <laughs> you know... It is, uh, it's probably one of the easier ones to do. You have black and orange during fall for spooky vibes. It's so good. I love black and orange together. Dude, why can't it be Halloween every day? Halloween is, is like the best holiday. It's so good. It's so much fun. Chat, where are you going to be for Halloween this year? I know, look, I know we're literally in May, but I mean, it's Halloween in Stardew Valley. You got, you got to pick your costume now. Snap pick. What's your, what's your holiday costume? Also, you get away from me, you silly animal, you silly monsters. Get the heck out of here. Pirate is all, as always for you. Pirate's always a good one. Always a good pick. All right, I think that's all the hay we got there. Okay. So that's so the silo should be full now. Now I will real quick just replace all that. I think we've got enough hay for for the foreseeable future here. I'm going to go ahead and, because I know I put some hay in this auto grabber over here, so we might as well keep it all in one spot. Farmers think I'm doing an avatar group costume this year. That would be, that would be a lot of fun. Iro? Ooh. <laughs> that would be a lot of fun. Little avatar group costumes. I would want to be, can I be Appa? <laughs> Just trying to think of, of what uh, wouldn't fit me at all. All right, um, you're going to be cheese. I call me cheese, cheese whiz. You're going to scout from TF2. Nice. You're going to go pro probably the yard, but you're going to go as the yard. You have a TARDIS dress. So like, <laughs> you're going to go as a TARDIS. I kind of love that. I don't know what I'm going to go as this year. It's honestly been like, like, I love Halloween, but I haven't had the opportunity or the wherewithal to, to dress up for it. 
in recent years, which I know is blasphemy, and I gotta make up for it this year, I think. I gotta have some kind of some kind of crazy costume. Alright, I think we're good. I think we're good. As far as uh silo farming goes, off to bed. Alright. Holy heck, it's four o'clock for me. Alright. <laughs> I was I was getting ready to start going into winter here, but I do have to get going, unfortunately. I do have to I have to work in about an hour, so I need to stop now so I can get myself all situated, go have some lunch or something so I'm not like dying of hunger at work. <laughs> I should dress up as Haley. That is an option. That is certainly an option. I got Haley, I got Chloe, I got Beatrix, I got lots of options. Maybe I'll go as the dwarf so you can't see my face. Either way. I digress. We'll figure that one out next time, maybe. Probably not. I'll just forget by then. But <laughs> Either way, hope you all had a fun time. Uh, I know I certainly did. We've made a lot of progress. We've got a good thing going on this farm now. Fractured Farm is starting to come into its own. It only took us like 120 plus hours, but we're starting to make it. <laughs> Actually, I don't know if it's been 120. Probably like 110 at least, but I don't know. I haven't updated exclamation point playtime since, uh, since like two streams ago. Either way, I digress. I will see you all next week. Um, probably, I don't think I'll be streaming, well, I might be streaming Monday, but I'll definitely be streaming, if I'm not streaming Monday, I'll be streaming Tuesday. Either way, uh, I'll be posting the stream schedule in the Discord and on the community posts as always. Hope you all have a good weekend. I will see you on the flip side. Be good to one another, be good to yourselves. And as always, this is Argon Matrix, signing on out. Thank you and have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye!